three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rocket Lasso Live, Season 2, Episode 5. And let's not bury the lead. I have a special guest today. We have Jake Allen from Sarovsky. Hi there, everybody. So, okay, fixed now. Yeah, sorry about that. I had a window playing. That was a problem. We When I turn on the audio so that you hear the, what the computer's audio is, so you hear the music, it makes it so that kind of stuff can happen. So it's a, it's a challenging combination. Okay, anyway, we're going to go back and let uh, Jake take over and show you some of some of the material and then we'll start the proper intro so get those questions ready but not quite yet yeah all right cool well let me just introduce myself i am uh, jake allen um and i am a 3d animator and motion designer at sarovsky um let me just pull up some of our work if you're unfamiliar with it here we go we are a boutique uh, uh animation studio uh based in chicago um they're kind of uh most well known for working on um, commercials and television titles and things like that um, so you can see right here, uh, Samantha B, um, Sarovsky, uh, before I was there, uh, did a bunch of the Marvel titles, uh, as well. So a lot of really cool, uh, hits there. Um, you can check out some of our work here at Sarovsky. Um, I'll just highlight some of the things that I've been working on in the last year, uh, if anybody wants to check it out. Um, let me just click on broadcast. Here it is. All right, cool. Yeah. So some of the things that we've done have been for, uh, companies like Jeep. We've got stuff for Verizon over here. One of the most fun ones I did this year was uh, right over here, the, the main titles for Rami, which was super cool. Also, congratulations, Rami, on the Emmy. So <laughs> very cool. Um, but I'll just uh, I'll just click on some of these and just show you a, a quick uh, taste of, uh, of what we do. And if you're uh, interested, you can always head over to Sarovsky.com and, and dive in. Uh, it looks like it's loading. Let's see. Do, do, do. We got pretty fast internet, so hopefully it pops up quick. I know, yeah. In the meantime, I'll just describe the video. No, I'm just no, kidding. <laughs> uh, let's see what we got in the chat. All right, cool. Uh, we got Tobias, Dean, Polytex, of course, Pro Tools, Spatten, hello, hello, Yata Glow. This is loaded Ooh. up, but let's say hello. Uh, Electron, hi, hi. Wes, Max, Carbon, hello, hello, Carbon Cube TV. I think I've seen that name before, but you're pretty new. Uh, Samuel Tech, hi, everybody. How's it going? Uh, uh, ZP, hello, hello. Uh, Picaro, or I'm not sure you say it, but that is uh, JC. Oh, nice. What's up, JC? <laughs> Tom. Uh, Kamal. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming and hanging out. I'm really excited to have another guest on here. Um, so, okay, it looks like your stuff popped up, so let's let you go and do it. I think we might be cropping your head off a little oh, bit in this bad. window. Okay. So, I'll just, like, slowly, so, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's only in this shot where it crops a little bit. But okay, no worries. More good. Just as a heads up. But, Very yeah, cool. Don't want to cut off the good hair. I know, exactly. I'm um, like perfectly quaffed, yeah. So, okay, go ahead and talk through. But also, make sure you tell everybody what the... Um, special what your specialties are like what are if they were to ask types of questions are you like a rendering guy are you a technical for sure, guy for like sure. very broad strokes yeah and then yeah, your yeah. As well. i think the way i would describe myself is i'm i'm definitely more of a 3d guy um i i, I think everybody at sarovsky we kind of identify ourselves as a little bit of generalist so i do work in after effects and i work in 2d animation but uh largely for myself oh thank you for the the camera uh largely for myself i do a lot of um a 3D work. Um, we work in Cinema 4D and Arnold at uh, Sarovsky, so I do a lot of product rendering, and I'm also a big um, simulation guy, so I mess around in RealFlow and Houdini. Um, on the latest job, for the first time, I've been uh, trying out X-Particles, which is also super duper cool. So uh, yeah, if you have any questions about any of those things, um, uh, I'm more than willing. I'm not super familiar with things like uh, uh, Redshift and other third-party renderers. I'm pretty much an Arnold-only guy. Um, but that's uh that's pretty much it yeah so uh feel free to uh shoot your questions towards me um also right over here in the screen i'm gonna go to this screen and cam view uh now that it's loaded this was actually one of the first jobs that i worked on at sarovsky which was super cool um i want to make sure that we're not like blasting uh the uh, stream with the audio of this guy but I'll click on this link and just yeah, make sure. Yeah, the volume's way down. So okay, perfect. Most of, most of the apps for this purpose are way down. Are already set. Okay, cool. So yeah, so this was this one was really cool and was actually uh, sort of a hybrid job. Um, we needed to model all the assets for this one. So normally, I think for a lot of uh, a lot of gigs, um, companies will send their their products as CAD files if they've already been made. Um, and I know Cinema 4D now has the awesome CAD importer. Um, but in this instance, they were giving us just the physical product. So we had to sit there and take a bunch of pictures and model it. And uh, I like working with uh, Cinema's modeling tools, but I'm also very familiar with Maya's modeling tools. So this one was actually modeled in Maya and then brought into Cinema. 
um, and shaded using uh, um, different textures. I think we used a few of the uh, Everyday Material collection on here. So shout out to Chad Ashley for helping us out. It was awesome. Uh, turnaround time was super quick too. Uh, a lot of the struggle with this one, I think, was uh, getting the textures right. Like if you see on this button right here on top of the set top box, there's this like hilarious sort of anisotropic like metal texture that we had to get right. And we counted like the amount of rings on the button just to like <laughs> get it absolutely accurate. Because, you know, the client was like, hey, we want this to represent our product as accurately as possible. You know, we don't have any digital versions of this. So it was really cool because normally, you know, people give you the 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 product and they say, you know, make it look pretty. Um, but this was kind of uh, build it from scratch and make it look pretty kind of job. Um, it was really cool. Lots of light linking and lots of really fun Arnold things were done for this too. So these side materials right here were super shiny plastic, but a lot of the other lights that are lighting this rough plastic right here, I didn't want to light it. So I did a lot of uh, uh, like, you know, this was a separate piece. So I did a lot of light linking and Arnold making sure that all these guys were lit by their proper sort of pieces. And then uh, this final shot, I believe, um, uh, is also lit that same way. And I think the glow and everything was done in After Effects. It was basically comped together in After Effects. And that was a super fun job. It was also a very, very quick turnaround. So it was kind of a cool introduction to the way the workflow works at Swarovski. And uh, we rendered this guy on uh, on the farm that we have there. So um, shout out to uh, Royal Render. I know a lot of people are familiar with Deadline, but we use uh, Royal Render at Swarovski. And it's a super cool you know, render farm manager. Um, another one that we just uh, wrapped up, if, uh, if this guy will load, is um, this guy right here. This was a fun little piece for Jeep's uh, Veterans Day. And this one, they actually did give us a model of the Jeep. It's like a 1941 Willys. Uh, it has a certain name. It's like an MB something, something, something. Yeah, I don't know. You, 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 we can Google it later. Um, but basically, it was uh, to celebrate 11-11-11, uh, which is Veterans Day. So 11th hour, 11th day, 11th month. And uh, uh, this one was done with the uh, super duper talented Dan Moore. Uh, he was uh, uh, freelancing with us and uh, helped us out. Um, one of the things that I always thought was so funny about this job is um, we originally had shaded the Jeep really nicely, right? Like it was, you know, supposed to be honoring their tradition, honoring their, you know, the aspects of their product. Like and they, perfect Jeep. yeah, it was like a perfect, perfect Jeep. It had this like perfect paint on it. And they ended up coming back and being like, beat it up. And so we ended up putting a little bit of like, edge wear and rust on it and they were like beat it up more and so we ended up like really really beating this thing up so you can see right here we've got some rusted materials on the top you know there's some fogging going on in the windows uh this is more edge wear uh, this one used a lot of the arnold curvature shader that was uh something that uh you might see online i know redshift also has one but it's awesome for like multiplying with noises to get this kind of edge wear um and then a lot of like you know heavy use of bump maps and normal maps just to like really knock this thing apart and when we were done they were like yeah that's it yeah that's perfect you know we want it to look like it's been through war and back and i was like oh cool that's awesome so so those are uh, two projects that we did at uh, at Sarovsky that are 3d related that are um a really fun and then um i'll just show a little bit of my personal work too if that's okay yeah. um so this is i will go to i am jake allen.com uh hilariously jake allen.com is the domain i used to have uh and now uh, I lost it because uh, oh, I was lazy and like, it? yeah, in like 2009, I was like, I don't need to renew it. And then I didn't end up renewing it. And now some and other, now Jake Jake Allen. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some other stealing my name, you know, so uh, there we go. So uh, this is a, the most recent uh, compilation of work that I've done. This was my spring 2019 reel. Um, also, shout out to Jamie Gray for editing this uh, at Swarovski, but it's uh, a bunch of my personal work along with um, with other work that we've done. Uh, I'm actually going to pause it because this was another job we did for Jeep that was really fun. If I just scrub ahead. This one um, was done with um, Cinema's Dynamics and uh, the Voronoi Fracture mm -hmm. uh, setup. And something that... Um, How about the dust? Well, yeah, I was going to say something that Duarte uh, uh, Elvish, who's our creative director, um, uh, had a great idea is if you export your camera as a, as a 3D camera, um, rather than rendering the dust in 3D, which can you know is totally possible and can add to render time, uh, we ended up using like a bunch of layers of particular for this one. So um, it was a really fun sort of idea of mixing together. We had a particular sim here along with the Voronoi fracture. And it looks I, great. I, I was yeah, I was really proud of this one. We ended up turning this around in a couple of days, and I think I don't even know if we ended up using dynamics. We just used fall offs to make things sort of fall away and used noise in a plane effector to push it apart. So. Yeah, so that's a, this is a, this is the kind of stuff that I do. So if anybody has any cool questions about that work or anything like that, um, you know, I'm here, I'm live, and 
ready to answer some questions. Actually, somebody, well, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do it because usually we do a proper intro, but we've got some cool questions coming in. We got a bunch of people coming in and giving us some shout outs. So we've got, uh, uh, I'm not sure, is that K, how would you say this? K3. 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 Is it me? Is it K3? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Um, I cut you up. What's going on? Zaza. Hello, hello. Nice. Nicholas, thanks for coming and hanging out. Is this a uh, Smeka we got in here? Jake is the oh, goat. Oh, Jake is the Hey, smack you. What's up? Smack you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. We, um, uh, we uh, presented at uh, SIGGRAPH together. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Um, so uh, let's just cover some other quick news. Okay, I'll probably have to edit a thing together because I want to leave your stuff in there. We don't want to okay. repeat it. So yeah, no worries. For the proper intro. But um, as long as we're kind of doing this interacting with the audience bit, um, JC had a question asking... Uh, you had meant you had said what a, a quick turnaround time, but yes. to you, what is a quick turnaround time? So that Jeep job was like a quick turnaround time, and that one was like uh, three days, I think. That one was like a very, very quick turnaround. I mean, for me, uh, uh, a regular. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I had the screen up, so I'm yeah. looking over at the screen. Um, I think for me, a, a quick turnaround is probably something like that, like less than a week. Uh, anything over than a week. I mean, uh, in advertising in the commercial world, a week to two weeks can be pretty normal, but. Um, Three days for me, I was like, "Wow, we gotta come up with something really cool." So anything that's around that short, um, but if but if it's something that we can pull off, it was it was really cool because we were able to just very, you know, same thing with Cinema 4D. It's you're able to sort of iterate super duper quickly. So we threw the Voronoi fracture on there, and then we you know messed around with a little bit of the MoGraph tools, and we already had something that looked really cool within a couple hours. And we were like, "Okay, here goes nothing," and uh, showed it to the client, and they were like, "That's awesome. That's exactly what we wanted." There was like a hilarious lack of. Uh, uh, back and forth there was some but it was like cool you know and that, that was all we got so yeah that was that was pretty much it excellent so just trying to cover any i gotta stand up and tippy toes to be up in the camera oh, yeah I, I raised <laughs> it because i don't want to chop off your head yeah no worries. um so just a little bit of quick news uh i'm going to be having a new tutorial I, I stayed up crazy late last night to try and work on a tutorial i'm going to open this up and then just give you a quick preview of what i've got so um we've got a full-on car and we're doing a full dynamic simulation in order to create really fun, controllable wrinkles. And then uh, I let this go last night and it's actually going to yank the cloth off of it. So it's kind of a full, there's a bunch of different sections of it should be really fun. Uh, I guess the important thing to note here is that this was originally inspired by one of the questions during the live stream where we figured out to get some nice wrinkles. And then I followed up on it on the Patreon stream where we continued exploring the techniques further and further until I got something that was pretty solid. And now we're making the proper tutorial. And this is exactly the workflow that I kind of want to have happen. Uh, it's really important to me that even though I have a uh, Patreon and it's amazing and thank you so much everybody who's supporting on there. I never want to lock away any content. I want everything everything that's good to eventually get out to everybody. So the bonus stream on Patreon is mostly for um, for tinkering and trying to go deeper. And anything that seems useful, I want to extract out and make it a little more polished and put out into the world. So the plan is, is to get uh, some of this really nice uh, stuff going. And I was even playing with Redshift. We got a nice Tesla car in here. Everything was really, was. I guess I should have the screen there. But yeah, uh, it's a Tesla model that I downloaded from Turbo Squid and just a bunch of simulation. It's kind of a beginning to end workflow in there. So it should be really cool. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Sage of Shadow, welcome. Darren, hey, we got some people that we don't usually get. How are, how's are all the new people? I mean, I know Darren comes every once in a while. Sage, you definitely make it uh, decently often. Uh, Slobo, hello. That seems like a new name. Uh, okay, we're going to do the, I'm going to do kind of an intro. I'll, I'll cut it all together myself. But, um, ah, screw it. We don't need a proper intro. We already did everything. That's fine. Um, so everybody start getting those questions together. Uh, remember the rules of questions. I need to see the artist or studio who made it, or it has to be so abstract of a question. Uh, like a typed out question or just like a Google image search. Uh, if we can't give credit, then we're not going to do the question. Uh, in addition to that, if it's a video, make sure you put a specific time code and or the effect that you're looking for. Uh, your standard motion graphics piece has dozens of different things oh that God, might so be many. the question. So we need Layers. to know specifically <laughs> what it is. Um, and yeah, so start getting those links together. We're going to tinker through. Usually I, we're a little bit more picky when I have a guest over just so that we can find something we can kind of bounce back and forth on. But in any case, we got a couple links coming in. I'm definitely going to aim for questions from people that go less often. Now, uh, Zaza does have a link to another thing by Zachary Corzine. I'm a little hesitant to do that because almost every week we're answering a Zachary Corzine question. question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I do want to go, I, I do I do like the idea of checking it. Let's go and check it out and see if I'm there's curious. something unique. Yeah, I'm curious. So we're going to go to All our screen here. Super duper cool. 
cool. He's yeah. a big, big Houdini guy. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, it's actually some of the uh-oh, uh oh, oh no. long guy attempt. Uh, uh, that wasn't me. I was not oh, in no. Maryland. Oh, now which, it's making it's locking me out of Instagram. No. How do we? Which one of you in the chat um, is in Clarksburg, Maryland? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, make you. There we are. Nope. Make oh wait oh this is asking what was that asking? I think it was asking if it was us. Somebody was trying to log into your. Yeah, somebody's hacked. Somebody's hacking me. Maryland. Yeah. No thanks. That wasn't me. This wasn't it wants me. a new password. Oh, oh I have to make yeah, a new yeah, yeah. password for Instagram. Hey everybody, stop trying to log into his account. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. And just so you know, anything on this screen they don't see. So oh, <laughs> that's why okay, I wasn't cool. yeah, it was really like, too bad about that. Not showing everybody your um, password. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we are now logged in. Sorry okay, about that. Uh, all right. So uh, let's see. We got another uh, Zachary Corzine design. And oop, yep, if this is, uh, I feel like he single handedly developed the design language for like a whole year of motion graphics. Yes. Oh my God. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially um, these like really elegant, like you see kind of the slow motion movement and then it speeds up again and it kind of loops around. I, I guess just like in terms of, yeah, in terms of animation style too. Yeah. I gotta say, I really like this one. I think this is one that we can have some fun with uh, as much as I don't want to just keep on answering questions about him. Let's, I'm going to keep this tab open. There's a good chance we will tackle this one, but let's take a look at another link. Um, uh, WS Meeks. This might involve some math. That Ooh, sounds dangerous. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Ooh. 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 Interesting. That is hashtag satisfying. Uh, mm. <laughs> this is from uh, Arben. I'm going to go with Arben, or is Arbenel Biatin? Oh, is it like one of those ones where it's like the one is the is an I Yeah, or I don't know. Like that? I'm just going to go with Arben. Yeah, but, Arben. There we go. Uh, so apparently there's some audio, but we're going to go easy on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's pretty cool, too. But at a certain point, well, a lot, this is the kind of question where it's like, you get it instantly on like first try, or it's right. like, oh, my, we're going to be noodling with this yeah. for like an hour yeah, until yeah, it yeah. starts thinking about like, oh, my God. Um, as so we're like, like well, our little thing, yeah. yeah, it is cool, but though. it is at a certain point, I think it does just turn into a circle like it's rotating. You know, see, at the end of the day, this is just traveling back and forth, right. So it's probably like, um, uh, like half the radius of the circle, but it gets a for little sure, tricky. Sure. So it's neat. I wouldn't mind tackling that one because it's one that might be open ended and dead end. Yeah, it's one I prefer to do on my own time, not when we have a guest. Yeah, definitely. We'll try one more link here and see if we like the look of it. Oh, the object Another Instagram. This one's from Mark Malta. Ooh. And let's see, what we got this one's called Spark Perspectiva. 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 All right, so we kind of got a okay. platonic traveling and it rotates and Ooh. a bunch of neat shapes i feel like i've got a pretty good idea of how to make something like this oh nice um so but you know what i do want to do that zachary corzine one as well why don't we try and whip through this one really quick if i were to kind of do some of the geometry idea here how quickly could you make it look neat like how, uh, like we're going fast uh let's give me like five to ten minutes maybe I okay would say. Let's just like you know throw some lights in there make it look interesting you know yeah. that kind of thing so, all right oh, cool. all right so we're tackling this one so i'm going to take control Sweet. first do some of these quick outline parts and then jake will take over and make okay, it look cool, pretty cool. Nice. so let's go ahead and Look here now of course we want to start on a different base so i'm going to go to our platonic and i was actually watching a documentary about these types of shapes and they're really fun but you know, let's make a buckyball i always like the buckyball the only problem is that there's these extra subdivisions inside of it that might break things for us but make this editable polygon mode select all the polygons and i'm going to right click and say untriangulate it's a shortcut i don't typically remember so i'm going to try and type it in now u shift u Holding down shift pops open the window. And I did that because I want to turn on create end guns. And I'm going to tick this up to, let's say, five degrees. Just enough that this should be able to all melt into itself. So with that, I think this is entirely built using parametric bevels. If that was Cinema 4D, that's my guess, is using this bevel object. Because first of all, we can put this inside. And it's currently in edge mode. But I'm going to begin by putting it on polygon mode. So every individual polygon should be doing something. Now, we got to tweak a couple things. Well, here's the offset. So we can push that out, but I guess we need a couple parameters here. Uh, we have the max angle. I think we want to decrease this a lot. Okay, if I decrease this small enough, then we start getting individual ones. And now with this offset, you can see how it's actually, ex it's kind of, you know, it's it looks like it's doing a, a proper bevel or like an inner extrude. So if we pull this in a little bit, and then we can grab our extrusion, 
these two values are unlinked, but you can see how we can change the way the shape goes. And something that's, of course, great in cinema is we can turn on the limit parameter. And now I can push that. Actually, it doesn't, it's not quite, it is shooting past. So I guess in this case, limit isn't quite working. But I think even in that example, we could see that they were still had a little bit of direction to them. But you can now see we've got a very clean parametric version of this that we can, um, could animate. We could easily put some keyframes on here or animate it in some way. Actually, why don't we even do that just uh, right at the beginning? So I'm going to select both of those properties, click record. We're going to keep this real simple. Um, actually, we'll re let's make it a loop. So at the beginning, we'll record that. At the end, I'll record that and just go to the midpoint and we'll have this get as skinny as we can and maybe push inward. So those will be the transition. So hopefully this doesn't, yeah. So we're going to go from that and then back again. Cool. That's the beginning. Now we'll make a second unrelated bevel. We want to calculate afterwards. So if I drop that in, now you can see this is, this one is set to edge mode. Do we want it to be on edge mode? Well, not necessarily. We can set this to point mode. And as we increase our offset, you can see that this is going to be creating a bevel on every single point everywhere. So we're going to get a little bit of this diamond shape going. So I, I do think that looks cool. I don't know if that will survive every point in the angle here, but let's, uh, let's keyframe that as well. Keyframe, go all the way to the end, set the exact same keyframe, go back to the midpoint. Here's where it breaks. So we'll just shrink Oop, let's not go negative. So let's shrink this to be really tiny so it doesn't explode. I think it does work at two. And let's just transition here. That all seems like it's working pretty well. And I don't know how far we'll be able to go, but next up we will create a third bevel and calculate after that one. This one is on edges. I'm gonna leave it on edges this time. I do wanna limit it so it doesn't go too far. But now you can see I should be able to increase this and with limit turned on, no, it still explodes. I'm not sure what it is about the shape that it's, it's exploding. Typically. Things work a little bit smoother than that. Um, but if we were to, let's see, go back to the start frame. Uh, I wish we could push it a little bit further. It's this is entirely dependent on the order of operations. If I move this earlier, let's turn off the point based one. You can see that I would be able to push this a lot further. Actually, I like this better. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with this. So start at that. Also end at that at the midpoint. We'll find something that's reasonable. Fortunately, we can't go too far until it breaks. We'll do that. So yeah, that looks neat. And now we have that shape going. It does look like we get a little bit of a pop right there. So I'm going to make it very tiny. Go to one there. We don't over, yeah, there's a little bit. Actually, it's probably angle based. So I'm going to crank up. The, I'm going to drop the angle threshold down. So it's every single edge is going. So now that calculates, we get these nice shapes. We don't want the fong. And then we've got our point bevel. And this is gonna be the last one to calculate. So at the time of zero, we're probably gonna to have to have some pretty small numbers here. But yeah, I kinda of like uh I kind of like the let's turn on the limit and see if it works. Oh, it is working. Excellent. Um, so I can start this at something like 12, record that, go to the end, and uh actually it uh, I I think I just keyframed it in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna set this to 12, record, hold down alt as I drag, and that means my viewport won't refresh. And I can't record again. Just make sure I actually record there. And at the midpoint, what do we want that to be? And now we do have limit turned on. So I feel like we can push this pretty far. But honestly, I think that transition is part of what we're going for. So I'm going to go to zero. So with that, let's see what we end up with. So we're going to get this transition. It's all a little bit uniform. But yeah, I like that little moment of transformation there. That looks cool. And then we can let this push itself back out again. Yeah, actually, I'm pretty fond of that shape. It looks looks pretty cool. So before we mess anything up, let's save the scene file. Episode five, Oop, not renders, we're going into scene files. This will be file one. Um, I'm not even sure what to call it. Um, polygon. Polygon bevels. That's fine. It's descriptive. Not polygon bevels. All right. So with that all going on, what I'm figuring is we want to outline these somehow. There's a bunch of ways we could do it, but um, a really quick way would be to create a cylinder shape and an, a um, cloner. Drop that inside of the cloner, set the cloner mode to object, and the object will be this nice shape that we made. Now this is going to explode all over the place. I actually want this to clone onto the edges, and that's going to make a whole bunch of them. It's going to take a while to calculate so we can change this, I think, but I'm not certain, to multi-instance. Uh, this is way too big and we can get rid of a bunch of the segments. So height segments, one, we don't need that. Caps, I'm going to turn that off just to run faster. Uh, our rotation segments, eh, 
Eh, let's go with eight. That should be relatively smooth. Set the radius down to five. Nope, we're going to probably have to go pretty tiny here. Two, even one. Well, we'll do two for now. So that's all cloning at the edges. But if we turn on scale on edge and crank this up all the way, then this should perfectly outline all the edges. What's great about this is it's kind of like using the Atom Array, but we have very, very direct control of the the shapes that are getting cloned around. So I, I like being more precise like this. So let's see if the radius looks a little nicer, thinner. I think it does. Um, and Jake will make it look pretty, but let's just put some a different color on there. So it's going to pop out from the background just a little bit while we make any final decisions. So throw that onto our geometry. And yeah, that's looking pretty good, kind of weird and interesting. Uh, one way we could definitely make it different would be if we travel inside of it and view it from the inside. That could be fun. So let's jump to, I'm going to hit save real quick, hit the midpoint. Let's just make sure we're inside enough that, uh, yeah, we're not intersecting. And then maybe like pull our camera way out. It's going to be weird and kind of abstract. But Hopefully that works. Now, I'm going to pull the, pull the cloner after it because maybe it'll calculate, but I'm not certain it's going to refresh properly. So let's hit play and see if it, it actually it is. It's doing a fine job. And let's just see if this looks okay. Um, it's, well, it's weird and neat. Um, I like it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we should have a looping animation. We could keyframe the camera and whatnot, but um, I think we kind of hit the meat of this. It's all about animating these bevels and the you know parametric bevels in cinema are awesome. So I'm going to save incremental and pass this off to Jake and feel free to make any tweaks and make it look as pretty as you want to. For sure, for sure. Okay, so um, I hope everybody doesn't mind, but I'll be using uh, Arnold here. I think we have a watermark on our render, but it should be okay. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, maybe not. Um, maybe I'm not used to R21, but is there a plugins menu uh, here? Extensions. Oh, it's under extensions now. Oh, see, I'm an R20 user, so I was like, oh, where is it? Okay, so let's pull open our um, IPR window that we have right here. So for those of you who are not familiar with um, Arnold, it's just the interactive preview window, just like uh, Redshift and uh, V-Ray and other renderers out here. But we won't see anything, um, basically because we're inside the shape right now. So one of the things you can do is you can use point lights in Arnold, but I, I actually really like using area lights just because they can give you um, just a, a better fall off and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quad light right here, and I'm going to uh, middle mouse click to go to the four sort of view. And this is something I like to do, but I'll go to camera perspective. So we have this, oops, I'm holding down uh, alt, let's see, control Z. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Are or you, you said, a, are you a Mac guy or I'm, PC guy? I'm a. Uh, are you a one two three guy right here? Because I usually use Alt. For, I always uh, use Alt. Oh, weird. I wasn't getting it. Oh, that's weird. Maybe I just accidentally clicked on the light or something. I don't even know. But okay, so we're going to put our uh, IPR down here. I guess I could always dock it uh, as yeah, well. Yeah, the window's not too big, so it gets to be a pain. But feel free to save a new layout if we're going to be jumping back and forth to it. Oh, okay, no worries. Yeah, that sounds perfect then. So let's do this. Uh, I'm just going to sort of hack together this uh, layout right here, and I'm going to set the scale to something like 25. Oops, I put in 49. So I'm going to go 25. I keep typing in numbers because I guess the numpad. Here we go, 25. Ooh, beautiful. So the interesting thing uh, about this is now we can see it from the perspective on this upper right area, and we can see the inside here from the camera. So something as simple as an area light, and the thing is because it's in kind of uh, wireframe mode, it's a little uh, tricky to see, but I'm just going to hide this. Um, I'm going to pause the IPR for a minute. I'm going to hide this platonic at the moment uh, in the lines. But you can see the light is right there. It's sitting inside, and we can click on the light, and we can change its uh, width and height. If you're in object mode, you can also scale it slightly in this direction. Uh, but one of the things we could also do is make it sort of reflective, which I feel like would be really cool. Or you could also make it uh, have transmission turned on, which is kind of like refraction. Um, so maybe we could throw like an HDR in there or something just to give it like a really soft light. So I'm going to try that, and we're going to see how that looks. I'm going to turn off um, the uh, region on the Arnold render right here. And I'm going to turn these platonics back on. And let's take a look at what we're looking at. OK, cool. So it should hold up if I scrub through. Um, but you can see that the lighting is kind of fading off towards the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive in here. Also, these are standard materials. Oh, they are. OK, cool. So let's create new Arnold materials. So let's go to a Arnold standard surface. And let's throw that guy on the uh, cloner. And that's just like a standard gray. And then we're going to create another Arnold surface. And we're going to call this one lines, just so I don't get confused. I always get confused about my materials, so I'm just going to name that one like body, maybe. So we've got the body of the shape, and we got the lines of the shape. So I'm going to put that right here on the platonic. Very cool. And as you can see, they're both sort of like a standard gray. 
Um, I am going to do one thing. I am going to um, pull this light backwards so we can just see where we're going and see the light changing over there. So we have this light right here, and I believe the platonic, I believe it shrinks, right? So I might animate the light keyframe so that it doesn't intersect with the shape, but it looks it looks like it's okay right now. Okay, so we got some cool shadows. We got some some interesting shapes and things like that. I am going to go to extensions and go to C4D2A and create an Arnold camera like so. And we just want to make sure that we activate said camera. So the camera is way outside this platonic shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this forward until we're back inside and we can see it in the preview. Um, let's see, I'm just going to experiment here for a little bit and make sure that my Arnold light is in the right location. So I'm going to this is something that I like to do is if I want the light to be perfectly in the same position as the camera, this is sort of a, a little trick, but I'll, I'll put it here and then I'll just reset PSR uh, in the commander like so. You know, it's one of the best features in R21. Oh, what is it? They dock the PSR button. Oh my default. gosh, look at that right there. I've okay. Been talking about it for years and years and they finally put it right there. That is amazing. Okay, because I kind of want, I want the light to emanate from the camera. I feel like from this view, it's kind of like, I feel like we're in sort of like a doom situation. You've got a flashlight, you know, sort of sitting in front of you. So as the shape moves, I want the light emanating from sort of behind the camera. And uh, one of the things we can do as well is adjust our uh, platonic uh, or the body. Basically, we can adjust this uh, shader. So I'm going to open up the network editor. It's going to take up some of the screen right here. And we have our Arnold standard surface. And that's where we can determine the color and all these different things. So uh, one of the things is they had a like a green color in the video. So we're going to do... Let's try like a blue. Let's do something a little bit different. So we have this blue right here. And the transmission is really interesting. If we raise that guy up, we'll be able to see through. Now, there's like a, a sort of a black void behind this shape. So there's not really anything to see. Um, and we'll maybe put some lights in there or put a background in there just to make it more interesting. So for now, I think we're OK. It's not looking brilliant at the moment. But um, I will go into our lines material. And I'm going to make these lines sort of a, not a complementary color, but just something interesting. That's kind of like neon-y. Let's do like a yellow or something like that. Now, it's really dark and uh, hard to see on the inside of this thing. Uh, so I'm going to add some more lights on the inside as well. Uh, one of the things that we can also do is uh, take this, and I'm just going to turn the transmission back down for a split second so we can just see what it looks like. OK, that's interesting. Uh, all right, so let's grab our light right here and make it a lot tinier. OK, and I believe this light, auto, the lights automatically in Arnold have uh, normalize on. And what that means is that it, it keeps your light brightness the same depending on the size. So I'm going to leave that on for the moment and just put one to the side over here and increase the scale. And doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm going to go inside this shape so I can actually uh, see where I'm putting it. So I'm going to put one over here, and then I'm going to lower its exposure level um, so that we get just a little bit of um, light coming from it. But what I'm actually aiming for here, and you can kind of see it in this window, is these really interesting gradients. That's what I'm thinking we'll see is these interesting gradients. And as the shape changes, you'll see the gradient sort of moving across it, and that looks kind of cool. So I'm going to put two lights. This is sort of a very, very simple setup that I'm going to do. And hopefully this looks interesting enough. So I'm going to throw a second light in there, and you'll see, whoa, it's really, really bright. So I'm going to lower the exposure on this other light, and I'm going to move it over here. And then we're going to do the same with another light. We're just going to keep making these cool little gradients and hopefully go from there and come up with something that's interesting looking. I mean, I'm kind of noodling around here, but this is at least an aspect. If you were sitting over my shoulder at a computer, this is basically what I would be doing where, you know, I'm making this sort of shape and I'm coming up with these reflections. Okay, that's interesting looking. So now as it moves around, whoa, I think the, the camera maybe um, isn't all the way inside the object. So as it animates, um, one of the things we can do is pull this camera forward. And I don't know if this would look cool, but if we set it to like a super wide angle, it might be interesting. So let me just set this guy and see how that looks. Oh, not I did the opposite. I meant to do a lower number. Cool. So now we have this like sort of really trippy looking effect Very where trippy. everything. Yeah, exactly. Where I'm like, whoa, where am I? You know, I'm floating around in this 3D hall of mirrors. Um, so that's uh, something that I think is is pretty cool. One of the other things we can do is let's go back to our body. And I double clicked and I pulled open this guy. I'm going to raise the transmission real quick just so we can see through it. And 
Uh, I don't know if you have a uh, a faster way to put an HDR in the scene, oh, or if you have a uh, HDR links in here. Uh, I have actually not used HDR link, so uh, I think you put on Arnold Sky. Right click on the Arnold Sky. Okay, cool. There we go. Uh, HDR link. Perf. Okay. And then click on the Arnold Sky. Where would you feed the HDR in? Uh, I would feed it into the. I need to. Uh, let's see. I need to click on this little triangle button. Okay, just grab the color. Okay. And then drop the color on the tag. Oh, Oops, okay. Cancel. Here, I'm gonna click cancel and yeah, right there. Yeah. Okay, so drop drag color, color directly on the tag. tag. And cool. If I'm, not sure did it work i believe so i'm seeing something interesting yeah if i oh maybe not uh let's see is that the usual workflow i don't i don't use arnold so i'm not sure no totally usually i set it to texture and then i just go, throw a yeah, texture in there uh, go back to just being color i think it might or uh, uh, click on what are you on here? let's see there's this little triangle right yeah. here and it goes constant texture shader network i would think it'd be tech oh but yeah. we don't want the texture to open but i think we might have work, made it work just hit undo a few times get it back to the default state. for sure for sure my bad. Here we go. I'm not sure. I don't know the workflow. I made the tool, but no, drag, no. drag color directly on. Let's see if that works. Oh, you'll need the tag. Oh, again. let me add that tag again. HDR link. And... If anybody knows the answer in this chat, I know. I feel like such eye. a. I'm like I, I. just have my folder of HDRs, and I'm like drop, yeah. drag color to the HDR link tag. So somebody. That's okay, what I cool. It'd be. There we go. All right. Okay, I... now dub. I'm not sure if it's working, but double click on that tag, and now you can select HDRs. Ooh. Okay. Very cool. Go to uh, all. Here we go, show all. And now if you scroll, we should have tons of HDR. Oh, very cool, very cool. Yeah, I just wanted something that would create at least an interesting looking environment. Um, so let's try, I kind of want to try one of these ones that's outside. Let's see if that guy works. So if, I bet it's loading it. Oh yeah, here it is. So generating one TX file. Yeah, that's another thing with Arnold is it, it generates these TX files uh, every time you use one of these uh, HDRs. Click on, um, click on the tag. Let's see. And then in the tag, you can go to advanced and then set it to low or preview mode preview it should mode. load a lot quicker oh okay perfect perfect yeah so i'm looking at these and this is kind of interesting i mean it's kind of like we're in some sort of alien church kind of looking thing so if i go back to the body material and scroll back down i can go to our transmission and now um arnold's uh weird in that it um it has the roughness of the specular and the transmission linked together so your reflections and your ref refractions will both be the same amount of blurriness but if you don't want that I think they added this extra roughness parameter. So I'm going to crank up the extra roughness a little bit just so we get this kind of cool looking effect right here of this sort of foggy stained glass yeah. that we have. And we're like, ooh, all right. And then um, the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to take these lines and maybe put a brighter color on there. And uh, and then I think we're, we're, we're at a point where it's at least looking interesting. It's definitely not uh, perfect by any means. Um, but, you know, I'd rather have something cool to show. So let's do, yeah, we had a... A green, so let's do a blue or something like that. All right, cool. So now we have this sort of uh, animating sort of shape and color. And if this is too bright, obviously you can go into Arnold Sky and you can lower your exposure. Um, but I think that doesn't necessarily make it look any better. So uh, yeah, well, yeah. If you want to pop open the render settings and just if you have any hints of like good Arnold settings here, yeah, you go totally. To, make um, a larger render. And then yeah, definitely. Up. Okay, cool. So yeah, so uh, I'm gonna set the uh, Arnold render settings like so. Uh, Arnold is kind of, um, I know that their like solid angles manifesto is like, uh, let's make it as simple as possible. You know, less sliders, the better. So it's kind of cool. I mean, it does mean that you have to sacrifice render time for sort of ease of use right there. Uh, I'm going to turn off the IPR just because it seems to be doing its thing. Um, but basically, um, it's kind of like Redshift where you can dive into your different uh, kinds of sampling for different things. So light is passing through this body right here, and that's transmission. So as you know, I, I turned up the transmission, which in other renders is sometimes called re refractive or things like that. Um, and we can increase the amount of samples of transmission. But uh, all these numbers right here are actually multiplied by this uh, camera anti-aliasing number. So you can actually get away with, uh, since we're doing so many um, light bounces through transmission, you can get away with maybe like one diffuse, one specular. I mean, I may be pushing it here, but you can go for transmission and two camera anti-aliasing, and it still might look better, but what it means is we're telling, um, and we can, I think it automatically does this, but I'm just gonna set these to zero. Um, but what you're basically doing is just telling Arnold, hey, focus on these kinds of samples. So then if I, I'm just gonna uncheck save and just have it uh, open to the picture viewer. Sure. But if we do current frame and just go right there, you can see, um, it's definitely not gonna be as fast as something like a, a Redshift or an Octane. But as you can see, these areas are way less blurry now. I mean, I probably have to uh, crank up the samples for like a final render. 
But this is something that I would do in a production environment with Arnold is look at our scene when we're done making it and say something like, okay, where should the renderer focus its efforts on? And I'll go into the transmission settings and raise them up. Or I'll go into, for example, there's, you know, specular highlights, these reflections right here. And I may raise those numbers as well. You know, if there's not a lot of diffuse light bounces or, or what we call like global illumination, um, you might be able to turn down that number. And, uh, and then you basically tweak it from there. And it's, uh, yeah, it's really simple, but yeah, I know there's something neat and compelling. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I don't know. I mean, uh, just to, you know, on the spot in a couple minutes, I was like, this is at least interesting looking. You yeah. know, it's it's uh, it's definitely something that I you know would take home and maybe tweak some more, or just play around with. But this is just an idea of how to take something like when you open Arnold and it's blank and you're like, where's my lights? You know, just put an HDR, you know, light in there. And, you know, now I know how to use HDRI link. So thank you, everybody in the chat. Um, and uh, yeah, make something that just looks kind of interesting, I guess. So uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, tweaks we might do if we were doing this again, or quite, I mean, we could spend all day on this. Yes, Easily. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'll, I'll probably render this out as an, anima an, as an animation. They'll probably still have the watermark. But, right, right. Or maybe I'll send it to you and you can oh, render cool. it in your yeah, license I would love to do that. version. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, first of all, we'd probably want to clone maybe some spheres or a shape onto the actual points, because you mm -hmm. see we get these little gaps in them right now because these aren't quite reaching each other. It's very low poly right now. I could have seen if we had more time, but we'll move on. But I would, I would see asking you like, oh, can we have every polygon be a different color and then right. like, refract slightly differently and then choose yes. the gradient? Like a lot of things we do like that. Definitely. Uh, animating the camera so that we got like a some sort of like spin that would also loop would kind be really neat. Or yeah, would be cool. Just, um, or, you know, and this kind of thing was like, oh, let's start animating animating it to music where it's like matching right. the beats and, exactly exactly um, you might have of, things like outside the shape moving by you know if you see oh see yeah that'd it, be you creepy know, like something like you know like some sort of tentacle that gets near it yes, and moves exactly. away or like, even oh, like God. just a, a yeah. model of a hand like right when it comes close it'll be in focus as opposed to the way it just blurs out to right. nothing exactly a uh, lot of fun things and I, I really like uh chatting about like oh where things i could have done because yeah, you suddenly yeah, yeah. start being like oh it's really cool I'm like this could be really interesting yeah um so uh, let's check. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for the question and that uh, that first render that we were looking at to get here. Very cool. Uh, we we went off the rails, but I do feel like this was if this was cinema and yeah, it is C4D. I'm assuming that they're using the bubble. I've talked about this technique before, so I don't know if that inspired it, but it's really cool. They That's use Corona cool. render. Oh, interesting. Um, but very nice. Um, and we could have layered up more and more and more of those if we wanted to morph between different face shapes. It could be you know, right, there's a exactly, lot you could exactly. do. Um, but let's check on the chat, see if there's anything. And if anybody has another link, go ahead and start putting them in. Although we still have that one Zachary one to go check out. Um, thanks everybody for doing for doing uh, shout outs of answers when you see us doing something wrong. It's funny that like something like HDRI link where I was in charge of most of the design of that. And it's like, well, we figured out three years ago how to make it work in Arnold and I yeah. don't use Arnold. So it's like, how do we link like, it? I, I think, think this? I know it works. Yeah, um, exactly. I love that. Somebody said, uh, Apple by 3D said, uh, more specular bounces would look nice. That's definitely something that would be really cool because then you get more reflections. I mean, obviously render times would increase, but that would be that would be interesting to do. Um, asking about PC builds. Actually, you seem more like a hardware guy than, than I am. I'm terrible at, um, at hardware. Um, so do you have any recommendations for things these days? I mean, I've um, got, I've got, how do you, how do you pull up your current computer specs? I think you press start and you type in, I think it's sys info was what I used to do back in the day on like windows XP era. Um, I think you can still type it. S Y S. Yeah, Sys there it is. System information. Woohoo. So I'll just pull this over here. Hopefully there's no information that shouldn't be shown. It's like all your serial numbers. Yeah. Um, so is this the right thing? Or do we have to click on hardware? Uh, I believe that's the right thing. Let's see. Uh, oh, hardware resources. Um, if not, I oh man, I, I barely remember. I have I'm, it. I don't do this a ton. Yeah, I have yeah. it somewhere. I can. But you can see right there. You know, you have your baseboard manufacturers. Like you have an AS Rock uh, X299 OC, so overclocked. Um, I don't know if it has the graphics cards in there. I know there's like a configure computer. Thing you can do back in the day you used to right click on my computer yeah. but like i don't know yeah well that's i, I have the official stuff somewhere yeah. um and then actually i do recommend going to grayscale gorilla they still have a page where they post all of the stuff on their individual computers and chad is always keeping his machine very up to date so that's yes. a cool place to go check out 
Uh, when I have my more official website up, then I will have more info there. But uh, in the meantime, do you have any specific recommendations for what you'd want in your machine? Uh, I think if I was going to do like a machine upgrade now, I know a lot of people, like I do a lot of calculations on the computer, on the CPU. Uh, since I use Arnold, I mean, I can use the GPU version, but uh, a lot of what I do is still on the CPU. So a lot of people I know have been looking at the Ryzen cards, like the Threadripper stuff, uh, especially people that do simulations in Houdini and X particles and stuff like that, you know, where it needs to sort of chew through those CPU cores to be able to simulate it fast. Um, I think that would be a processor to look at. I mean, AMD's, uh, not their graphics cards, but their um, their processors have been really cool, their CPUs and things like that. Graphics cards, obviously, like most GPU places are still based on CUDA, so it's like anything NVIDIA. More CUDA. Yeah, exactly, as many CUDA cores as possible. So um, I remember Chad trying to explain that concept yes, to me. Yes, exactly, like, exactly. Okay, CUDA? You're like, I got 10,000. Yeah. You're like, I, what does that mean? Yeah, is yeah, that CUDA? translate into, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, anything like that. I mean, all the RTX cards are really cool. And I like those a lot. Um, I know not a ton of the renderers, except maybe Redshift, are, are integrating like their ray tracing technology yet into it. I think it's mostly real-time engines. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but that's what I, when I last read about it, I was thinking about that. But yeah, I would definitely look into AMD Ryzen uh, CPUs, especially if you want to get out of the Intel sort of loop. Um, but you know, the i9s and things like that are also really good, so. Uh, excellent. Um, Sage is saying that on the Reddit page, or you have a page, a build page for 3D artists on your website. Uh, yeah, Sage, feel free to put a link to your website Ooh. there if you have a uh, yeah, um, build awesome. page for 3D artists. Uh, is that based off of talking to people, or do you just keep up with hardware and you put that? Um, but that's cool. Um, so let's see. Uh, MLKKY, maybe that's Milky Finn? I'm not Milky sure. Finn, yeah. um, has a link to... Uh, a link to somebody's stuff. So let's check out another link. Very cool. Um, pull this over. It's in Twitter. Whoa, look at that. Oh, oh my goodness. I remember oh, seeing it, this. It's even yeah. kind of a tutorial. I know. Look um, at that. It even explains it. Well, okay. Well, here's the thing. I don't do... <laughs> here's the thing that I won't tackle. This is really cool. It's made by 80 level... That's brilliant, but this is a, already a GIF animation tutorial, so I am not going to recreate someone else's work where they're already explaining it. This is what they're trying to get out there. It's a, even hashtag as a tutorial. I don't remake other people's tutorials, but this is really cool. Everybody should check it's it out, dope. and it's pretty step by step. And I'm I'm really impressed. That's really cool looking. Yeah. Um, I don't know how far you can push it. So I, I I'm interested in checking this out more, but yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, to tackle that one. Yeah, tackle that when they're explaining it. But very cool link. Thank you very much for putting it in there. Yes, Although I'm awesome. going to put it inside of my browser so I can check that out later. Um, okay, and then uh, Dean from NYC has a Arnold tune shading question. This Ooh, might be a nice. good chance to do it. Uh, Trey, you finally made it to the stream. Excellent. Oh, uh, very nice. good to hear. Good day to make it, too. We got jake allen in the house yeah Ooh, man look at this this is oh, sexy wow, that's very cool oh man it's almost oh like gosh. a sid meyer type of thing but there's yeah. a yeah man it's really i don't know it's you know you know it's something that is interesting to me a hmm. concept i've thought about quite a bit is when our eyes are trained because we're, we work in 3d all the time our right. eyes are trained to like spot sketch and tune they're right. trained it's like i know what an arnold tune shader looks like mm -hmm. i know that no matter what you do shader wise, you're going to get this very specific 3D geometry where if yeah. you were an artist drawing it, you wouldn't perfectly like there'd be like this little sliver of light on the edge of the nose. And it doesn't look good. And right. you just wouldn't put it there. But yeah. 3D is like, well, that's supposed to be there. There it's it is. Like, this is the geometry yeah. you gave me. Yeah. Now, I know that there's some there's some AI stuff coming out and different algorithms that are pushing it to the point where it's like, I can't right. recognize it anymore. Right. Exactly. But uh, I'm always impressed at this kind of thing where it's like it feels like I, you, it's very precise. So it's like, OK, it's 3D. But. It doesn't at a glance. It doesn't read as three D. There's a lot of design. They're not letting. Yeah. They're not letting the Arnold tune shading. They're not letting the sketch and tune do the work. They've made a lot of choices, right? And right, that right. is making this look like there's a voice on it. So, yeah, especially like you know the color, the detail. I mean, some of it has like the little dot shading on it. I really like that. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, these dots. Um, these dots actually are really great. I love that as yeah. a detail, and uh, the shading is is. These, I mean, it's, it's decently flat. Like, there's a little bit of shadow from one side to the other. You can see the curvature here. But even that side and this one, they're not really changed that much. So there's yeah. a little shadow, just kind of implied. Um, so, yeah, that keeps that keeps it looking very flat as well. That's sure. neat. Uh, lots of great doodads going on in here. Lots of repetition. You see the same shape repeated again and again and again. But, hey, if you do it well it's really in cool. context, yeah. that's just totally working. I dig it. Um, 
So, uh, I do you know anything about the Arnold Tomb Shader? And would the version I have have some... Uh, it would. I don't know a ton about it. I was just playing around with it, actually. It's, it's interesting. It's basically like um, you have your Arnold Shaders underneath. They can be sort of Tomb Shaders, like Sketch and Tomb, where you, like, quantize your light, you know, into, like, different steps. Or, like, uh, like what they did here is um, you can have, like, you know, GI and light bounces and things like that. But rather than making splines, like Sketch and Tune, it uses an edge contour filter, ah. which is, uh, I, I guess it's, I, I don't necessarily know the math of how it works underneath, but it's, like, you know, raster-based. It's not, like, vector-based, like, right. uh, like the one in Cinema. So it's really interesting. Um, and there's a really, really cool tutorial, actually, on the Arnold help files. I it might be by this guy. I'm trying to. I was about to say is. before we go too far, we're complimenting yeah. this work so much. But this is Calder Moore, Ooh. and uh, a lead texture artist at Atomic Cartoons and Freelance. And Freelance. So, oh. uh, but Damn. this is, I mean, like I, I, this is the kind of thing I find really inspiring. Super I love this cool. kind of thing. I'd probably save this image to Pinterest just as a like, I like the style. Things I like I these enjoy. colors. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, so. it's very cool. They, that's I would I would heavily encourage people to go to. I know they link to this person's video, but if you go to the Arnold. Um, uh, documentation under their tune shader. I think they have a link to a tutorial where somebody did made an almost not a replica of it. Oh yeah, there it is. The complete Arnold tune shader breakdown. Oh, this... um, yeah. Rather than diving too far into it, this person creates something that looks almost exactly like what this sort of style is. Um, like I said, I don't know if it's the same. Yeah, artist. there's a couple. Yeah, there's like multiple parts. Oh, it is it. the same guy. It's Calder Moore. Yeah, that's yeah. his YouTube account. Okay, yeah. Okay. So he. So he's if you want to get it from it. the horse's mouth, yeah. yeah there you go. Um, that's great. Yeah, so they'll walk through. So, of course, we're not going to recreate their tutorial, but, do, I mean, do you feel confident to do a little bit of tinkering where you could do a little yeah. stuff? Yeah, um, let's play around with it. Let's see. Let's test my knowledge because I, I, I might be like, ah, Chris, but it I, could be cool. I'm going to keep this window open. So in the show notes um, and in YouTube below in the description, you should be able to get a link directly to this. So you should definitely check this out because, you know, this this speaks for itself. But yeah. uh, let me see if I can pull up a model that's got a little bit of detail for you. Something oh, nice. that's got a couple awesome. parts. Actually, we might uh, just because I have it handy. I won't be able to share it in the. Uh, if you don't guys don't know, on Patreon uh, I share all the scene files. Uh, now I can't share anything that's kind of copyrighted or owned by other people or something I bought off Turbo Squid. But I do recently have that. Tesla model, which I kind of, well, it's all redshift textured up, but that should give you a good opportunity to be like, oh, there's different shapes, different totally, whatnot, totally. and it's got some different detail. It's a clean model. So uh, I'm going to pull that open and just clean it up for you real quick and let you control it from there. Awesome. So close this, uh, give this another incremental save. Very cool. And save incremental. And I'm also going to save this layout for you. Window, customize, save layout as... Arnold Jake Allen. That's me. Neat. And then just so <laughs> I'm not tripping over myself, I'm going to set this all to default. Sweet. Middle mouse button to go back to my regular view, open up a new scene file. And let's see, it should be pretty easy to pull open this Tesla. It's actually already open, but yes, I want to create a second copy. And I'm just going to delete everything that's not the Tesla. <laughs> awesome. Let me just highlight all the dynamics, and there we go. There, so we got a clean model. Yeah, you might. Well, I, I guess we're going to. I'll leave the materials just so that yeah. you have something to replace as we go. For but sure. feel free to actually. If, is it better to delete them and you can drag yeah, them on as needed? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can But but them it or could be. Like it's it is dangerous to leave a material from one render engine to another one. Oh, uh, very true. So, uh, I mean, you can see it's all organized pretty well. Yeah. So it's not like we're going for something realistic here. So I am going to kill them off. Okay. And. Uh, we've got the nice clean model here for you to work from, and you can Ooh. just create and add there. And just to super clean this up, have it ready for you. I'm going to remove all, yeah, removed all the unnecessary materials. Give this a quick save in episode five. But like I said, sadly, we can't share this one, so I'm going to put it inside the raw recording folder. Sorry, folks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But hopefully we get some good info for you. Yeah. So this one is totally ready. Jake will drive this entire one. Nice. nice I'll just nice. ask questions from the background. Uh, let's check any more chat type stuff. Yeah. They want to see some sketch and tune discussions. Tune shading discussion. Um, totally. Yeah. But, but doing a little bit. I, I am interested in seeing a little bit of Arnold stuff. So yes, let's totally. uh, let's just see. Um, looks like a drawing from um, Jean, Jean Girard. Girard. Yeah, so very French sounding. Um, 
bring Clayton back. Oh, that's a that's a, oh man, Pro Tools. That's a great reference. I don't have him handy, but yeah, I have my robot, my ro my old robot. That, seriously, I made it back in like 2005, oh, and it's like yeah, this really yeah. detailed robot. I've used him before in tutorials. I, I really do like him, and I can provide him for free. But um, let's. Um, we could do a yeah yeah, yeah. eventually put him in a yeah. Arnold. If we if we get another exactly. question, then we could pull that up. Again. Yeah, but yeah, yeah totally. good good reference pro tools. I like that. Nose man, oh man, what's oh, going on? Hey, what's we up, got man? all sorts of celebrities hanging Ooh. out today. I love it. Oh, aka um, Mobius. I don't know if you John Sherrod is Mobius. He's uh, like, yeah, he's the guy from uh, what is it? Um, Yadorovsky's Dune. I don't know. It's uh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool documentary. Let me just pull that off with him. Yeah, I'm exactly. super looking forward <laughs> yeah. to the movie later yes, this year yeah, too. Exactly. I really like Denis Villeneuve. I yeah, I know. I recognize the name. Um, and I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna yeah. say it on air. <laughs> <I'm> like, yeah, <laughs> I, I do every name wrong, so yeah, I'm not worried like, about it. Uh, Nose man, Tobias, oh, Gerald. Nice. Hey, everybody, we got lots of people hanging out. Very cool. And then Russian name person. Thanks for coming and hanging oh, out. Very cool. Um, Coconut. Well, we got lots of people hanging out. Oh, Thanks nice. so much, everybody, for That's coming awesome. in and saying hello. I, I love having good crowd. And I, uh, you know, I, I would love some feedback on how you all feel about guests. Like I said, I don't want to overwhelm the stream with guests, yes, but true, true, true. at the most, it'll be every other week as long as I can keep a constant stream yeah. of them going. But we get totally. so many great artists in yes. Chicago. Oh my God, you have and, a pool to pick from. It's yeah. great. Yeah. And then you know, what? There's like 28, or there's between like 28 and 34 episodes in the season, so I can start repeating after that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah. Um, Nose man should be the right, next yeah, we have to, I love that. Yeah, awesome. that'd be amazing. Yeah. Come um, flying to Chicago. Yes. Yep. Come, yeah, next time you're in Chicago, yes, well, totally. you're, you're, you're already signed on. As yeah. Best. Uh, but in any case, uh, enough rambling. Uh, Jake's going to take over here and um, make this look great. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, one yeah, of the I things... Oh, yeah, let me center line. myself up yeah. here. Here we go. Uh, yeah, one of the things that I forgot to do the last time I was doing Sketch and Tune in Arnold, let me just switch to Arnold Renderer here. There is a, uh, a section of the settings for the edge filter and i believe it is somewhere in here i have to look for it because i just did it a second ago oh that's all good yeah um let's see let's see and then sympathies to uh jake it's very difficult to see the keyboard behind the microphone <laughs> no, exactly so. <laughs> yeah so i'm like i'm like uh i'm like an old man right now and i'm like oh this is very cool uh interesting um i'm trying to remember where exactly uh that is let me just pull open uh one of these guys i don't think it's in here is it that's one of these or AOV shaders. There is a tune shader. Uh, it's the uh, there's supposed to be like an edge filter. It looks like. Uh, do you have to specifically turn it on, or it just helps things? I believe to do the lines, you okay. have to have it uh, added. Otherwise, the tune shading is just uh, flat. And so uh, the tune shaders basically control the color. Um, whereas the You're uh, saying the Gerst tab does that make sense? Oh, the you? Gerst Gerst tab sampling. Thank you so much. That oh, awesome! Sounds like gibberish. To me, I but... know. I was like, oh, cool. Here we go. Du, 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 du. Is it under here? The edge detection filter? I don't think that's the case. Maybe I am making a fool of myself right here. But it says default filter type. Um, da, 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 da. I don't know if that's it because that's usually the way that it gets like anti-aliased. Um. But uh, I was looking for. Uh, EJ's in the I know house. he's like he's I like hey let's tune. see what this guy can do. Um, I believe it's somewhere in here. Um, I don't know if anybody else has uh, the. Uh, uh, Staten saying change to contour. Change to contour. Oh really? Is it under here? Under change to contour? Mm -hmm. Contour. Contour filter. Contour filter. All right. I guess that's true. <laughs> you were correct. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, and then I, okay, so I believe after this is default filter width is two. So if we pull that up, you should see the lines around the object. So it's under extensions. We got C4D2A. We've got the IPR window. Very cool. Um, that's right. There's no lights. So we got to turn on some lights in here. So one of the things that I like to do is I will create another one of those lights and I will target it to our car. So let's go and create a quad light. And let's dock this guy here. I know it's super tiny on the screen. Normally, I have on, on a second monitor, I'll have this guy floating on the other one. But um, just so you can see, I'll keep it right here. Uh, so let's turn on this quad light. And let's see right here. We should see our contours. And once again, because the scale is super small, it might make a difference if I set this to 100 for the moment. Um, I'm not exactly sure, though, uh, where my contour filters are. So if I go well, into... Somebody also said they're in the shader. Oh, no, it's in the shader, says a Tobias Lind. Really? Okay. So let's go to Arnold, uh, Surface, uh, Tune. There we go. And let's just throw it on the body for the moment just to see. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, so that's the one. Thank you so much, Tobias. Um, now, do you have, what kind of control do you have over that line? Is it just straight up the line and you control the Fortunately, I think it is. I think it's straight up the line. Like that width setting right there, I believe, is the is the global width of it on the um, on the setting. So if I set it to like, let's set this back up to uh, like four or something like that, you can yeah. see that it just makes it a lot thicker. And I believe the anti-aliasing settings will get it. Um, and I think in the tune shader, uh, perhaps they changed it in a newer version of Arnold. But if you scroll down. Um, this is the uh, contour filter, and you can change the um, color and tone map of it, I Where's believe. Where's a width scale? So if we oh, drive the width scale with noise or something. That is true. Actually, let's try that. So we're going to take this, and we're going to pull it open into the network editor. Uh, and no I know, I know. Yeah, exactly. I love it. I love it so much. So let's pull some noise in. And uh, this is something that I like to do is uh, Alt-W, which pulls up this. Let's see if it works right here. Alt-W uh, is just the menu for um, piping things into Arnold Beauty, displacement, or viewport. So I'll go Alt-W, uh, Alt-W, let's see if it works, one, and I'll pipe in the noise. And the reason I'm doing this I is just, that type of shortcut. it's great. Yeah. yeah, so that way I can just like, I can scale it. I can make sure that it's the right size because sometimes the noise is huge or it doesn't necessarily look good. So I'm going to set this to something like 10. And we can just see like, oh, okay, so there's some interesting noise right there. So yeah, you could pipe this in technically into tune, edge, and width scale. And then if we Alt W one, uh, we can see, and hopefully it works. Oh I'm just, yeah, look at that. Yeah, all right, look at that. So now we got some rough sort of sketchy lines. That goes a long way. There we go, there we go. And now I believe the next thing you can do um, that that, that uh, Calder guy was talking about on the tutorial is you can create a ramp. And uh, Arnold has these ramp RGBs, but they use the... Uh, the default sort of ramp settings that cinema has so you can do things like you know spread your knots apart and things like that um but i believe what we're going to do is go here and here and we're going to change everything to step and step and that way we will have these sort of steppy effects between each of these uh and i think you're supposed to pipe this into the uh base uh color i believe or tone map let's see uh, it might be tone map. Um, once again, this is me playing around with something that I was like, uh, I yeah. just learned about this. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I'm trying to figure it out. So let's just go like this and swap it around. Okay, there we go. So I'm at least getting color changes, which means that it's probably in here under the tone map. So if I go like this, perhaps my non-stepped gradient is having an issue as well. So that shader is both generating lines and the surface yes i believe so i believe that's the way that it works so i'm just like oh interesting oh in the shader you can adjust the angle threshold under edge detection to get more lines oh that's really cool so let's check that out edge detection angle threshold okay so if i zoom in on this guy it's flat white for now but if we adjust this angle threshold oh, yeah. you can see that it's creating more lines and more areas um i'm gonna pop this out actually let me just uh undock this window so we can see it a little bit bigger on the screen. Um, so that's kind of cool. And you can see that the width is adjusted by it uh, so far. It's it's pretty interesting um, that it's in the render. So like, I believe the fuzziness of this is controlled by your camera, like anti-aliasing settings and things like that. Um, but that's pretty cool. And it looks like under advanced edge control, you can set a priority. So I believe if you have multiple objects, you can uh, give it, you know, this line goes in front of this line, this guy line goes in front of this line and that kind of thing. So it's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to adjust the base color to something like this. And let me see if my ramp setup is working. If not, <laughs> I would totally just go to that guy's website and I would be like, let's just check out what he has to say. Um, I'm are not you, sure. Are you piping it into? So I believe oh. I'm piping the ramp into the tone map right here. I'm not sure if that's the proper way to would do it. Would it not be the color? Let's try it and see. Because I believe the tone map is, is what like quantizes your color. Mm -hmm. um, whereas this guy, I think, is just the ramp for the base color itself. Mm. And that was something that I saw. It might have to be in U or V mode as well. Um, ramp and noise. Interesting. Oh, you know what? Uh, look at that. OK, so we have our, um, yeah, exactly. I don't know if it has to be on custom. I think it might have to be set to V or color. So I'm going to go to tone map as well. I'm going to take the color back off one more time. And let's set it to, is it V that we have to do it in? Yeah, there we go. I think oh, I'm getting yeah. something. OK, so it looks like these edges, uh, I think it quantizes it based on like the angle. So because this is such a sharp angle, you can get something that's like, you know, set to this is basically the, the brightness of your color. Mm -hmm. So it's multiplied uh, on top of the base color. So if we get a noise and go like this and pipe our noise in um, like so and let's uh, or actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this noise right here. So control C, control V. And I'm going to pipe this guy into the base color just as an example. 
uh, we'll go here and we'll go to main and we will choose our colors. Let's make some goofy looking colors. Do, 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 do. So we have our goofy colors, right? But you can see that the shading itself that's multiplied on top of it is kind of this tune shading. Mm -hmm. And if I move the lights around, I believe that it is affected by whatever that angle is of the light. So if you want it to be darker or completely in shadow, you would take that um, tone map gradient. Sorry, my windows are all over the place. All good. Um, I'm going to go it's backwards right now because it seems like the brightest point is actually the darkest. You are totally right. So if I take this guy and I just go like so, and I go like so, oh, my gradient is acting up. So let's just put this guy here and put this guy here. Um, I think I am, I wonder why it's acting funky. Here we go. So let's go to step and let's go to step. There we go. So it's probably along those lines. I mean, I'm seeing... Most of the brightness was at the beginning. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, is like if I needed to pull yeah, it just ever so slightly close. So yeah, so you can see, like, it's it's kind of funky that it's all, like, cramped up here at the at the edge, but that's basically what you would do. You would create, like, five or six different knots, and then you would, like, hold all of them and then crank them down like so. So let's make this guy, like, white, and let's make this guy, like, a little gray, and let's try that out by just crushing this gradient down you can see that it's at least and i think i put a, a, a lighter color on the end yeah so i'm just gonna make that black and i believe if i crush this gradient down we can see well i didn't have all the knots selected one two three four there we go and crush it down cool cool so you can see that this is at least like the basics for the for the tune shading um and i'm pretty sure that for a lot of those videos there's only like one or two colors like in that picture we were looking at you could see that there's only like one dark color and one light color and the interesting thing too is that it does because it's an arnold shader under the hood if you throw a uh, another shape in there that doesn't have an a, a tune shader you can integrate the sketch and tune sort of style with uh, uh just like a regular arnold shader like this one doesn't have a tune shader on it so it doesn't get that um so it doesn't get that edge contour. But it's where it's overlapping the car, it does seem to. It does, which is really interesting. So I'm wondering if I actually didn't know that. Let's try that out. If I go, oh, I keep using your numpad and I realize it's not on. So let's go 10 by 10 by 10. And there we go. And let's drag this guy down. I'm looking at it and I'm wondering if it's like creating lines at the intersections of the mesh as well, which it looks like it is. So, but you can see but that it's outlined and intersection. Yeah, outline and intersection, but the actual shape itself of this cube, because it doesn't have that that shader on it, it looks like it's not getting those lines on the body itself. But if I take that noise and I throw it on there, you'll see now it's included mm -hmm. with it. Very nice. So pretty cool. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing is like uh, one of the things in that tutorial that um, that guy had is you can also change your uh, ray depth settings. So if you set your diffuse to zero, you're basically uh, turning off global illumination. And sometimes you might want to do that because you don't necessarily want like soft light or light bounces. Um, let me just pull this guy back in the frame. Uh, you might want the areas that are just in shadow to be completely in shadow mm -hmm. and things like that. So messing around with the diffuse depth can also give you kind of a soft light, basically, um, rather than something that is so uh, so harsh. There's not much in the, as for an environment here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was effect. gonna say yeah. I'm like adjusting the settings, and it's like, well, there's nothing to reflect, Jake. So I'm yeah. just gonna make it totally dark. Yeah, but that's basically what I know from the um, uh, uh, the tune shader, and also somebody. It looks like uh, Hero Studio suggested that uh, we use a distant light, which I think is uh, totally correct. Uh, distant light is like an infinite light in Arnold, and you'll probably get better. Um, let me just try to throw one of those in real quick and see if that creates a better look than using a quad light itself, because the quad light has like fall off and all that kind of stuff. I, I also think Arnold, when it starts rendering, it might like take over the processing, so we might yes. not we might might not be broadcasting super smooth. As oh, a my bad. So. Okay, well then I will just do this. Uh, I will just turn off that IPR, and we will just do a little quick uh, uh, example. So if we rotate this guy and pull that down and rotate this guy, then uh, this actually uh, should create a better uh, example. And I'll put that plane under there. So if we do a quick little IPR render preview, you can see right now that, uh, I'll turn that back off again, that it creates these uh, shadows. And this one doesn't have the tune material on it. So it has light bounces as if it's a regular material. But if we put this back on there and then click play, we'll get um, those sharp shadows. And if we turn off, that's the one thing I wanted to do. And then I'll turn off the IPR so we're not totally uh, crank in the stream, here we go, I will set that to zero, uh, is that you'll get uh, super harsh shadows. So there's no light bounces. So you get those totally black areas of shadow. And that's the kind of thing you can do 
by adjusting those rate up settings. But it's it's interesting. It's like a hybrid sort of thing, and you can you can mix it in with other things in the scene. So it's it's pretty fun to play around with. Yeah, what I like is it's so it almost seems like the system is very very simple. But yes. as you start piping in nodes, that's where the complexity comes from. Yeah, 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 um, totally. I think somebody actually uh, I designed EJ was saying that. It's amazing that sketch what Sketch and Tune can do, considering how old it is. And yes, it, it, it's barely been updated. There's been a few tweaks, but not much. Absolutely. And and the amount of styles, the amount that you have control over those lines, the way you can layer things, you have a lot of very fine grained yes. precision control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it looks like a Hero Studio set above uh, EJ too. Uh, Arnold Tune lines, and that's correct. They're in screen space, so they're like rendered, so you don't have like the magic resolution independence that you do with like uh, you know Sketch and Tune. Uh, especially because Sketch and Tune is like, you know, you can do vector lines and things like that. Or You can or, export lines, vector lines out of cinema that's using right. Sketch and Tune, like yeah. in the Illustrator. It's and you crazy. can pull it up and you've got your line art. Yeah, and that's why, like, I think it's true to appreciate Sketch and Tune. It's, uh, it's definitely a little long in the tooth, but it's like, it's a great renderer for what it does. And nothing is really stepped up to take that over for cinema, basically. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right. Well, that's some fun Arnold Tune material. Uh, I will say that, but again, this file will not be included. <laughs> yeah. Can't uh, can't distribute a Tesla model I bought off of Turbo Squid. <laughs> um, so uh, Pro Tools, thanks for putting the links in the chat. Appreciated for everybody who's hanging out in the chat. Uh, keep in mind that uh, you can continue the conversation for when the stream is over by heading over to currently the quick URL is going to rocketlassoslack.com and you can sign in and join in on the Rocket Lasso Slack community where the conversation continues. Very often, somebody will try and recreate something we had trouble with and figure out how to do it in the chat. There's contests, there's different challenges, there's like sketch groups, all sorts of really fun things going on in there and it's where I post things first. Um, so yeah, definitely make sure you go and do that and if somebody can throw the link for that in the chat as well, that would be great. Um, Trey is asking a question. Did I m make a mistake choosing Octane? Um, I haven't heard it used a lot in a while. I I'll say my opinion, and my opinion evolved off of Chad's opinion, but I have personally found it to be very true. Well, personally, by hearing this story from a lot of people, to mm. be totally true, which is Octane is everybody's first love. Everybody mm. grabs Octane and it's super fast and everything looks amazing out of the box. It's gorgeous. Um, and you just kind of can't beat the way the light bounces. Everything's just amazing. Yes. The problem is, and there's a story I've heard over and over and over again, like I'm not joking, dozen, like probably two dozen times from different people without them being prompted that they were using Octane. It was great. They started doing a project for a client they go and it's like, okay, turn on the cars, turn on the trees, turn on the buildings, render. And Octane just goes, no, like, yes. we're not doing that. Sorry. I've, I've had that exact situation. Like legitimately on an old job, we tried Octane and it was like, uh, same sort of thing. It was like a CAD model with like a bajillion screws and stuff like that. And we ended up having to dive in and like rip apart the model just because we were hitting the RAM limits or light bounce limits and things like that. So yeah, and I definitely think it's the same way. So I think a lot of people start in Octane and if you're doing daily renders, like that'll work for you all day long. For sure. But when it comes to like a professional pipeline, I've just heard this story so many times and like you feel bad. Like people are like, we had to run out to Best Buy and buy machines yes. to have yes. the amount of like computing power yes. that we need to actually process this. Yeah. So a lot of people will then transition to Redshift or Arnold. I feel like Arnold is probably the one used in those studios. It's not the fastest, but no, it's the most far. reliable. Yes. Yeah. And that's something that like uh, I've come to really appreciate about renders is like not the speed is great, but like the reliability. Like if you throw. 800 million, you know, clones and they're multi-instanced, you know, like, sure, they're all instances, but like, well, Arnold will get it done. It won't like keel over and die. It might take forever, but it will, it will finish the frame, you know, and that kind of thing. And that's like, that's something that I think at, in a studio environment, you really value is that stability. Um, Hacky is saying final render tune looks amazing. It's old, but amazing. I've oh, never heard of that. I remember final render. Yeah. The, um, I, I remember it was for 3d studio max. Um, or at least the person that I knew that was using Final Render used it, but I don't think it's I don't know if it's around anymore. They might have like a new renderer or something like that. But yeah, back in the day. When people talk about Arnold, do they only mean the CPU version? Well for me, uh yes. I think at our workplace our cards are a little uh older. Um so the graphics cards are super powerful for like the viewport stuff that we're doing, but I don't think they're updated enough for the GPU. So for me, it's it's basically all CPU is what I'm talking about. And if you have a farm that's all CPU based, it's like same sort of thing. You might just work on the CPU and then chuck it on the farm, and that you know it can chew through it there. So basically, 
Uh, MP, um, I'd have to check it out. I'm pretty particular, but if you want to message me on the Rocket Lasso Slack, I will check it out. That'd be cool. Um, that they say they have a one of the Tesla Roadsters modeled. Ooh, interesting. Um, so yeah, that, that'd be super cool. And, That's and really cool. if it if I'm like I said, I'm very picky, so don't I'm not making any promises. But if it's cool, then potentially it could be used in future streams. Yeah. Um. Uh. What do I think of Red? What do we think of Redshift? I mean, I like it. I I haven't used it as much, but um, the people that make Redshift seem like they're for me uh, after coming from like Octane, they seem really studio oriented and they're very production pipeline oriented. So. You know, a lot of like newer technology, like, you know, Arnold and Redshift just added like rounded corner shaders and like different kinds of noises and things. And they just always seem like they're they're grabbing what's like up and coming and adding it. And it's like production proven. And I've, I've heard Redshift is really stable, too. So it's very nice. Yeah, for me, um, I'm not I don't render that often. I, I have the luxury of not having to render <laughs> that often. Yeah. So I tended to stay render agnostic when we were developing tools back when I was at Grayscale Gorilla. We would try and develop for the big three. Right. And um you know physical and then the three biggest renderers which were always octane redshift and arnold um having said that now that maxon purchased uh, redshift uh, oh yeah it just makes it so it's the obvious go-to for me like that's the one that they'll be developing it should have really great integration and it's just the one i've been trying to focus on learning a little bit more having said that there are limitations i like there's a lot i mean first of all the arnold tune stuff is great the curvature i definitely like better in arnold oh yeah the, the curvature um, shaders but all of them have their own, own little quirks, their own little, little limitations. Uh, Redshift recently added in the Cinema 4D noises, which is just something that's like a must have Super for me. Cool. Yeah. Um, so that that helps a lot. When it was only Arnold, it was like, ah, it makes me feel like I gotta go with Arnold yeah, just because yeah, of those noises. Exactly, exactly. Um, it even, even, uh, even goes to like, if you're gonna use image-based things, I almost always, if you're going to be tiling it, I'd always feed in the Cinema 4D noise, set a light overlay, and it just puts that oh. little, like you take a Luca, scale it way up and an overlay, and then like even the tiling wood pattern or concrete or anything, suddenly... It gives does, it that variation. Yeah, just enough yeah. variation where your eye is going to these bigger splotches of light and dark instead of individual like imperfections that would yes. visually repeat. Yeah, totally. So, and that's always really tough when you throw like a landscape texture and you're like, this looks cool, but you see it like tiling and you're like, oh no. Yeah, it looks yeah. cool. And then you zoom out and you're like, oh. And you're like, oh God, it looks like a video game. Yeah. But... Um, let's see. Any thoughts on where V-Ray for C4D is heading? Uh, that's something that I thought was really unfortunate is that I guess like Chaos Group like uh, uh, is now developing it again. They like repurchased the license, I think, for oh, yeah. C4D. But I haven't heard any news on that front. I mean, I, I was a big V-Ray fan for Maya and 3D Studio Max uh, back in the day, but it just didn't seem like it was well integrated yet into cinema at the time. So I just went with uh, Octane. That was the choice that I made. So yeah. I don't know. Um, Tobias, you are correct. I, that's kind of what I was saying is Arnold had the C4D noises before Redshift. And that's yes. why I was like, oh, I might have to go with Arnold because they have it. Now Redshift has that as well. So that opens up that possibility for me. Yes, totally. Um, one of the problems is because I just tinker in the renderers, I jump between them. And then now we've even got the new node-based stuff in cinema, which is getting integrated into third-party renderers. When you keep jumping back and forth, like I'm, I'm like, oh, the curvature, I know how that works. Oh wait, it's different in Redshift. Like, it's like, oh wait, no, go here, nope. One. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. Un until you pick one, or if you use it a lot, it would take a long time. Um, oh, that's nice. Uh, EJ was saying uh, that he just did a podcast with Chaos Group, and it is in development, and an update should be out by summer. Okay, ooh. so that's something that I'm definitely going to play around with because I like V-Ray. I have a soft spot for Chaos Group. I think they're very cool. So, uh, yeah, I, I would love to to play around with it. That sounds awesome. Oh, let's see. Um, okay, well, that's lots of chat, which is yeah. fun. I enjoy it. But let's try and jump in and do another question. Yeah. Um, somebody's asking about F-Storm render. Oh, yeah, that's is drama. that going way back? Yeah. No, that or is was, it new? If I remember correctly, it was like a render created by one of the guys that used to work at Octane or Otoy. And then like the the guy went and made like a third-party render for 3DS Max. And there's like... A weird legal agreement if you google it there's mm. lots of like drama yeah. Oh, okay <laughs> yeah, exactly. definitely not something i'm interested yeah, in. yeah exactly i'm kind of like eh, yeah um oh uh jc put a link and it's about sim stuff which Ooh, sounds like he's saying it's also a specialty of yours oh, so very cool. let's see what it is crossfader thanks for making it in proper nice. i hope you had a good lunch Oh, very uh, cool. share the screen. Let's see what we got. Uh oh, this is dangerous looking. I imagine oh, we yeah. see some liquid swirling. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Always with the liquid swirling. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I don't necessarily know how to do this with like the native tools. I mean, there's definitely plugins that you could use for this. Like, it looks like a like a, a fluid simulation. I think uh, and Tagma had a really cool tutorial about what they call Rayleigh instability or something like that. And it's basically this kind of pattern where you have like 
two fluids of different densities like flowing around each other. And mm. I think in it might be in both uh, Turbulence and in Houdini, you can do like a slice. So it's like faster, but I'm not sure. Oh, and it says hashtag Houdini. Yeah, so I wonder yeah. if it's I wonder if that's the case. They also say cinema, but it does look like it was probably made in Houdini and then maybe rendered in cinema. Yeah. So this is from Gustav Larsen. Mm -hmm. um, we got I got a very, very similar question last week, and it just goes to like we might be able to do um do something with this. I just feel like it would take so long. It takes so long to process for mm -hmm. us to be like A, B, A, B, right, tinker, exactly, tinker, exactly. that it ends up not being a good live streaming question. Yeah. Um, but it would be interesting to, because I wonder if, I'm sure with like turbulence and things like that, you, you might be able to come up with the same sort of thing in cinema. But like you said, it's kind of like a rabbit hole. It is a very deep rabbit hole. <laughs> I mean, even if I was going to try and make this in cinema, like I could even see making a big collection of splines on the ground yeah. and then just letting turbulence blow the splines around. Yeah. And then they'd all have to be sealed and then you'd have to do like a, little, a loft or an extrusion on it. Right. That can get crazy and then you'll probably get a little glitch frame. So it wouldn't mm -hmm. be a, a great solution. But yeah, if this goes deeper, I mean, I got to get like Bob uh, Bob from Insidium on the stream yes, or something to be yeah. like, let's go crazy. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, let's dive into experiments. So yeah, yeah this, just, uh, this kind of question keeps on coming up. It's just not something I have any experience with. So in vanilla C4D, I, it would be a lot of methods of faking it, not yeah creating it um so good question but not really something i think that we can tackle um now i gotta say um well, cross raiders also um sim how would you guys send these splines i like Ooh. that type of question Ooh. oh interesting okay <laughs> well since they're not moving i'd be like i would just draw the splines <laughs> yeah exactly um, take a while now we actually um i think in like episode two of this season there's a question the, the, actually yeah two weeks ago when chris was on we had a question that wasn't this exactly but it was similar mm. to this and i wonder if we could maybe have it do something i mean if i make if i make a spline that's a little bit like this i think you could make it look you know look you can make it look cool yeah 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 totally um, totally uh, but if you have any ideas like feel, if i especially as i'm going feel yeah. free to jump and be like oh don't okay. do it that way do it this way for sure um so do not um don't hesitate yeah uh, well first of all let's see who made this i love that scroll down it just keeps going um, yeah curves from uh sylvan Gossens? Gossens? Yeah. yeah. Sylvan Gossens. Like the blur. Yeah, that's a that's almost <laughs> like a it's like an well, Sylvian sounds like an elvish name automatically. Right, exactly, Sylvan, exactly. So but yeah, personal experimentation. So yeah. Um let's just tinker and see what kind of yeah, shape we can, let's see what we can do. come up with. So Okay, jumping into cinema R twenty one, of course. Um let's begin by creating a floor and immediately making it dynamic. Simulation, collider body. Then make a bunch of splines. Now, one of my main thoughts here is that we're going to have to repeat this. Oh, man, that's too bad. Oh, never mind. I can't talk about that yet. <laughs> um, but we're, I'm just going to make a spline shape, something like this. And what we need to do is iterate it a bunch of times. So along uh, with that in mind, my thought is let's drop this inside of mm, we got to go step by step. So before we make clones, let's make this dynamic simulation soft body. Mm -hmm. So soft body splines, they work awesome. Right now it's intersecting the ground a little bit because they it will be. So I'm going to move the ground down negative five. So there's a little bit of space between the two. Now I should be able to just hit play and we'll just see it fall down just that little bit. So that's a good start. But we need to get some very clean, even subdivisions here. So my thought is change this to subdivided, crank up the angle all the way to the max of 90. And now every, let's say, 10 units, it's going to create a subdivision. And that becomes the points that are going to be calculating. So with that in mind, um, it's not visually going to change very much. So let's add, I'm just, mm, I guess I'll make a sphere, T for scale, and pull this down. I just want to see if that actually changes a little bit. So I'll make that also a collider body and move the spline in the air. And let's just make sure that this is bending, oh, which nice. it does seem to be. Now, here's, the, here's a very important detail. Well, first of all, the sphere isn't subdivided that much. So if we increase the segments, you'll see it's actually matching it quite well. But here's where the magic comes in. Um, and then, oh yeah, there's an R21 bug where it doesn't refresh right away. So you have to go like one frame forward, one frame back to get the refresh. A little bit of a pain, but here's the thoughts. Um, if we give this thing, we can give it thickness and we do that. And I forget literally every time with size increment or margin. I can never remember which one. So 
currently we know that every point is 10 units away from the next one. So I don't know if we need to do five or 10, if it's radius or not. I say this literally every time, <laughs> but as we drop it, you're gonna see this going to collide with the ground. It looks like it is directly colliding. We won't be able to tell though, unless we sweep it, which we'll do now. Yeah, third times charm, create a sweep, create a end side. Always use an end side because you can control exactly how many segments there are. Give this a radius of 10, might be double what we need. And if we jump this up to eight, it should be kind of smooth. So if I hit play, we're gonna see this should, it's gonna be perfectly passing through the ground halfway. Actually, you see there's a little bit of thickness, but that's oh, natural. Okay. So size increment, I don't think is what we want. So I'm gonna right click to go to the default of it and now turn on margin and we'll type in 10. Now, if it explodes, that means I went too far. It does explode. There you go. So it should be half the amount. So I'm gonna say five and it's a radius of five and one point has a radius of five. The next one has a radius of five, meaning a combination oh, yeah. or I, I could have said that wrong, but. So under the hood, they're kind of like spheres basically that are yeah. like pushing apart. Yeah, I, that's the, I think the good way to think about it. So now I think we need our radius to also match that five. So set that to five. And now with any luck, let's turn on SSAO so we can see, uh, yes, this is touching the ground. And now this is now a visual representation of the thickness of the spline. Now we don't actually need this thickness for what we're going to be doing, but now we've got a very basic setup in which this is not intersecting or it's not intersecting the ground. We got the right thickness. And of course, if we were to change the distance of the maximum length, it changes everything else. We can get bigger, but we can't get bigger than the distance because they, they would collide with itself. And that's why, I, I, just for clarity, if I double this, it's going to explode because the points are intersecting where they want to exist. And so mm -hmm. you get this explosion. So five is now our maximum. There we go, that's fine. Now it's floating in the air a little bit, so we'll zero that back out again. And I move the other one down five, so boom, it's perfect. Uh, it's gonna smooth itself out a little bit based on just the different settings, but that's completely fine. Now that we've got the basics of that, what I would like to do, and we might run into some problems because we were running into some problems when we did the last version of this. Um, and that is, we need to make a bunch of copies of it. So do we make copies of the spline directly or do we make copies of the sweep? And it actually won't be swept in the end. So let's just see what we end up with. I'm gonna create two flowers and we are cloning, but I don't want it moving up in Y because we're going to not iterate, but blend between the properties. Now, the hope is if I change this radius properly, we should get a bunch of these. I want to just push them far enough that they're not intersecting. Yeah, that's about as far as we can push it. And I guess we can take the outer one and make it bigger. Oh, yeah, maybe How a little far bit more. We... Yeah. Yeah, okay, there we go. We can push there that quite a bit. And now create as many in-between states as we want. I don't want to go overboard. We are on a live stream, so we can't push it too far it yeah. but you're going to immediately see that some of these are too close based on their radius and you'll see that they'll push each other out of the way mm -hmm. so you start getting this perfect distance in between them but there's so much colliding that some of them are going to pop out now something we can do i have done before is we can create a second floor well the floor is perfectly calculated so nothing can pass through it so if we create a second floor hit r for rotate and spin it 180 degrees we now have a second floor that if i move it up to positive five and visually hide it. These are now super trapped in between those two floors. So I don't want to cause an explosion, but you see, see now when I frame forward, mm. they cannot move up. They You're cannot not move down. <laughs> so they are all trapped in that position. So yeah, that's now gonna force everything out of the way. And yeah, that's working well as a way of starting that. Now we do, well, if this is working, we might run into limitations, but we'll be able to throw in a couple extra layers of splines here, I believe. But let's figure out this part first. So ultimately we've got these moving around. I think it'd probably be cool. Why don't we make a field force? Why not? Hopefully it doesn't take too long to calculate, but in R21, we have forces Ooh. create a field force. And this field force is going to be blowing things in all directions, but because we're perfectly trapping the floor, I, we don't have to worry about the, the vertical dimension, the Y axis. So inside of the field force in the object tab, remember not fall off, but in the object tab, there's two different places to put fields and mm -hmm. I I mix it up I all the time that too, yeah yeah inside of here create a random field what's great about the random field is it defaults to noise when it's being put in as a field and uh, the view I want a viewport plane you can see the scale of the noise so with that there I want to scale the noise up a decent amount we'll make it pretty big and yeah that's pretty much it turn off that viewport plane uh, we know what that looks like so we don't need 
uh, we don't need to display any of the points. So I'm going to turn off the display box and we don't need any lines. Uh, don't, yeah, we're going to turn off a bunch of that so we don't get all the extra information. The point being is if we put enough force in here, and right now it's very weak, it's set to five by default, but jump up to 55. The hope is that we have enough wind that this is going to behave like a wind. We can start introducing variation into the overall setup. Now it's still pretty weak. Let's go three times as strong. Okay, now that's three times as strong, I'm starting go. to see some sort of movement. Uh, double, almost double that. Okay, so that is moving around. Now, there is more going on. First of all, I, these splines do have friction. So I'm going to turn off friction, turn off bounce. And we might be too strong now, so let's see what happens. Okay, it's not exploding. So now you can see these are moving around with no friction. But the soft body properties are very important here as well. So I think flexion is the most important setting. But if we get rid of a lot of the damping, let's just see what that does. I don't think it'll do too much, but yeah, you can see, definitely see that it can move more. Uh, the damping is pulling the energy out from the system, but actually that by itself, I, I was always blown away in the past, but I was always like, oh, like, you know, damping, that's just like a modifier. And it's like, no, the damping is more important oftentimes than the base yeah. setting. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Cause so, it's like a, it's like a multiplier that uh, uh, deletes some of the force, like every yeah, frame or something. It has like energy that. and it's carrying on mm -hmm. frame to frame. So we get rid yeah. of that. And now like these that. are kind of free to bend. Cool noodles. Uh, yeah, so those are looking good. Um, the shear, I, I always forget on splines. I don't know if shear does anything. I'm going to put down the zero and let's just see if it changes. I almost don't think it will. I think it's going to be pretty much identical. And yeah, it is. Um, flexion is the important one. Flexion is how much it can bend from where it was. So if we drop this down to five, this should be very free to wiggle around a lot. You see immediately that we get more detail here. It's not trying to maintain that shape. It can pretty much freely flow around. Just a string, basically. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, if we put down zero, then it should just freely rotate <laughs> as if the base shape didn't mean anything. Oh, okay. So yeah, this is, this is already working very nicely. So along those lines, let's save it. When things start going well, if it's, something's dangerous or something's going well, yeah, it's save like, it. Yeah, to make sure. You know, keep clicking on the wrong there, there. there. Scene files. Let's grab number two. Very cool. This isn't project two, but it's a second one in here. Um, spline extrudes. Spoiler. Um, yeah. Anyway, now we want to extrude this. Now, we did find out last time, and actually, I do remember the solution. When Chris was here, we were trying to extrude these splines, and it just did not want to extrude. Oh. So if I put that in, we can say, you can see one of them is extruding. So... Let's just continue on the assumption that that's working and say that this should extrude up 100 units. So you get one extrusion, but not all these other ones. So, okay, that's not working. Also, we don't want caps. So uh, no cap, no cap. So now okay. we get to just get that extrusion. Now we'd be like, okay, well, these are being treated as a single spline. So let's combine them. We'll do that by holding down control as we create a connect object, not control, alt. Hold down alt as I create a connect object. Uh -huh. And now actually this time it did work, but here's where the problem happens. I think if we hit play, they don't refresh. Oh, they're not. They're not counted if we do that. And a very frustrating thing is, even if we pull this out of that hierarchy, and we bake it. So I'm going to go to the, our one tag. Say bake all. Should go well. Not super quick, but not too slow either. Yeah. Um. You would think this. Okay, they're baked. They should totally work. But um. Um. Let's see. But even after it's baked, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't do the. Uh, yeah, I, the movement basically. It just like sits still. Or yeah, I think like I. I don't remember what the reaction is going to be, but I uh. think it just doesn't work. Now you'll see that this will actually have baked both sets of splines. If we have play. It's working okay, fine. Cool. We are now free to scrub. But you would think that that should just work. But if we put this in the connect object, even uh. if I scrub, it's not refreshing. It just doesn't acknowledge it. Hmm. So very frustrating. But if you want to make it even more frustrating, but here's how we're going to do our workaround. Yeah. Is if we create a rectangle. And I'm probably going to get this wrong, but let's set that to two. So now it's a very skinny, tall one. Ah. So instead of an extrude, you would think an extrude and a sweep would be nearly identical. But if I drop um, if I drop these two into the sweep, you see that that is swept. Oh. Put this back into the connect object and then put that in. Um, oh, oops. Oops, I missed the connect. And it still works. Oh, and then we do go. that. So now we it's kind of like doing an extrude. Yeah. And we could do it with a single line. But look, the sweep no, does work. It works, yeah. yeah why yeah, yeah. Why does the sweep work and not the extrude? I have no idea. I don't even think this needs to be baked. But it is baked and this is going to play nice and faster, quick for us. So yeah. yeah, nice and clean, nice and quick. It's just pushing this straight upward, which is working amazingly. Um, we could even, we have this spline. So we have the ability to 
very cleanly, turn on some rounding. There's a lot of subdivisions. We don't need that. So instead, I'll do a uniform one. And we'll just do, oh, it seems to. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. I guess the uniform. Yeah. I guess. All right, fine. We'll stay on adaptive, but right. we'll jump this up to 45 degrees. So it's Not just a couple of little segments there. So it's going to get the rounding naturally, naturally on it. Now, right now, this is passing halfway through the floor. I'm not bothered by that, yeah. but it does do that. Um, now, some, I mean, this, there are limitations, though, because you see here that there's different heights on different things. Oh, yeah, uh, the setup we're doing currently, I can't think of any way that we could get around that without doing like multiple baked settings and then offsetting some of them because yeah. it's just all one sweep. But like I was saying, I guess one way we could do it was if we completely change the order of this hierarchy. Um, it's always something important to keep in mind is we could pull out the cloner and put the sweep inside, make two copies of that. And I don't know if we need the connects, but they won't do any damage. So oh, I'll move this inside. So yeah, now we've cool. rearranged that rig and um, it's not blending between them very well. Huh. The connect might be causing trouble. So we'll get rid of those. And oh, that's interesting. I thought huh. those would go. I'm also going to kill off these tags, but yeah, it's not blending. We have identical hierarchies. I don't know why oh, funky. that wouldn't blend between them. Yeah. Um, hitting play also doesn't seem to want to play. So that's unusual. Um, interesting. Yeah, why are we? It's not. What did I do? It's set to blend. We've got yeah. six clones, and the two hierarchies are identical. Hmm, interesting. I, do I thought know. changing that would automatically work, but it's not. I mean, this does play and it plays quick, but it doesn't have all those instances. So yeah. in a cloner, and it's not set to like any of these other modes. Even if I make this editable, yeah, we still get the two. Oh, bizarre. Not the six. So yeah. wait, there are six, but it's not blending. Is a, and if they are and different. The you can point count is the same, right? Between the flower. Um, they're not, but it doesn't need to be because it's being calculated via the sub the ten ten distance sub. Oh, got step. it. Okay, yeah. Um, well, that's weird. Yeah, huh. this is a very weird. I mean, it. I was kind of doing this an extra detail. I'm going to undo so we can get back to the previous hierarchy. Yeah. But I'm just throwing that there as a limitation of what we did. For sure. Um, these are still not baked, but it's still running yeah, decent, still decently decently cool. well. Yeah. Um, now these these will be pretty sharp. We don't have that many subdivisions inside of it. And we have to keep in mind that we can't change the number of subdivisions to make it smoother without, you know, that would shrink the radius. It has to be between them and whatnot. So right, right, right. once we went to this type of subdivision, I'd probably create a subdivision surface and throw it inside of there. Mm. Uh, we wouldn't want to go overboard, but this will round out your edges. So that would be a fix there. I'm going to leave that off. It's it's a bad idea to run your simulations inside a subdivision surface. Cinema doesn't like it sometimes. But yeah, we do get this nice explosion. I'm trying to think this. These are calculating they're all independent so we can't offset them here right i could potentially think of ways that we could like grab the results here put in a fracture offset them all via the fracture like scale vertical yeah scale or i don't like that i don't even know if that would be possible yeah it seems very unlikely we're trapping between the floor which seems to be what could be the problem um but I, well i guess it, this is very this is a bad workflow we shouldn't do it <laughs> um but just to to the experiment i'm going to turn off Let's turn off the rounding to keep it low poly. And just out of curiosity, this will go very slow. But if we create a fracture object, put the sweep into the fracture, uh, actually immediately killed off the dynamic. So oh, I'm just darn. thinking that that doesn't like it. Explode segments. Yeah, it doesn't like it. So wow. too bad there. I thought that might work, but no go. But, you know, I'm, I'm never one to be deterred. There's probably other ways of offsetting it. Um, we've got, yeah, we've just got a single sweep we could manually make a bunch of different rigs i don't want to do that um how would i do that yeah, i'm th trying to think of a way of displacing these different lines i mean you could do it globally yeah but that wouldn't be following the spline specifically so one couldn't be higher than the other hmm. without making an entire rig separately so i definitely feel like we run into a little bit of the limitations there um, yeah, i assume the fracture object would be the one that could you could do like a scale and do like a field or something like that. Yeah. Give it at least a little bit of like a curvature. But um, but we're running into a lot of cinema limitations. And we did do a lot of tinkering with this two weeks ago. So I don't want to rehash all of that. Okay, for sure. Have that much time. Um, but yeah, and everybody suggesting things. Um, 
fields and it just appears. Except you, we, can, we, we can't use any yeah. effectors. We can't use any fields because it's going to apply to everything. Oh. And, we, and we can't we can't push things off of that floor because we have a floor above and a floor below. Mm. Um, now, in theory, I mean, right now it's calculating really quick and really smooth because we're on a single floor and we're trapping things in that floor. Uh, as an alternative, technically, we could... Um, I'm not going to build it because it would take too long and we're not going to get a great result from it. But we could, uh, like, say, oh, randomize the different heights, like 10 different layers, 10 different heights. Right. And then clone a plane instead of a floor and have ten those same different 10 heights. And they'd all be hanging out on their individual floors, not interacting oh, with each other. you'd have those 10 different simulations, yeah, basically. Yeah, 10 there. simulations yeah. on 10 different <laughs> levels. Um, so that was like... Uh, I don't, I don't even think it'd be that slow, but right now we're trapping everything between the two floors. It keeps sure. it very clean. Right, right, so right. we could offset them, but there's a, a limitation there. I would want to, I mean, I love these spline dynamics. They're just oh, so nice cool. the way they work, but I do get a little frustrated with some of the limitations we run into in the building the hierarchies. Now, of course, you know, just to throw it out there, we could, you know, you, we could easily do different heights if we copy the rig right and let's instead well, we'll make a copy one here and actually it's always being on the side control how round it is lay this flat on the ground t for scale scale it to the outside there i'm even fine having these angles the way they are we just mm. need to also set this to subdivided the same 10 units crank that up so now if we we have this copy of the sweep so put in two copies of inside T for scale. And now we'll get a couple of layers of oh, that. Very cool. And we'll steal our dynamics tags and nice. we don't need the flowers anymore. And now you can see we've got a second layer now doing a, a second shape. And now because it's a separate sweep and a separate simulation, everything's different. This one, we can make it be not as tall. So, you know, we could copy those. And I think if I play, this should just work. Yeah. Like they'll it, interact with yeah. each other. Yeah. So these are, these will interact. Everything's, the same and fine here, but you see we start losing the ease of modifying the rig, For but sure. you can copy them a bunch of times. And this is not that crazy of a thing to copy a few times. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm not against this in principle. Uh, and all that is working quite nicely. Um, honestly, just the way they're flowing around is really nice. But the one last thing I want to mention would be let's trap this in. I'm actually going to trap into a cube so we can very distinctly see that shape. I'm going to trap in the cube that's just big enough to trap everything. And something I like doing is putting a render display tag, turning it on and setting this to line mode. So we, we have that box if we want to. We could even put a few subdivisions just to make it clear that that is a cage around there. We can even change the color if we want to. But that becomes a box where these are trapped. And now adding a new collider body that we tell to be a static mesh. We do that so we can actually trap inside. These should be able to flow around, but they'll eventually bounce into this wall that's trapping them. So with that in mind, if we were to grab all of our dynamics tags for the splines, mm -hmm. I'm going to keyframe the rest length. I like doing this stuff. If we keyframe the rest length, and over the course of, let's say, 15 frames, doubling might be dangerous, but let's do it. I'm going to double <laughs> the scale. Forget it, yeah. <laughs> the splines will become twice as big. Um, and I think that means their natural scale is going to start. Oh, what's going on here? Why did it suddenly? I think the only thing we did. Oh, oh, oh it's there. It's just <laughs> the, not the refreshing. Just, yeah. yeah, the viewport caught up. Um, so yeah, it's a viewport issue. You even see here, if I frame forward one, I think it's going to break. But as soon as I move my mouse over the viewport, it refreshes. Yeah. So it's a refresh issue. It wouldn't render properly. But you can see by expanding this, this is eating up the space, taking on the form that we're inside, and we get something else that's pretty cool. cool. Now, that we're, I guess we're almost at that final scale. So um, let's see. We get some space we, filling curves. Yeah, this is awesome. I'm going to turn off all of this, and let's just see if that can play back accurately. Hit play. Okay, we do okay. get to see in the viewport now. So you can see how this is filling the space really well. Actually, the 200% pretty much maxed it out. But with all of the field force that we had, this should still be able to flow around a little bit. But it's kind of cool that we took those shapes, filled in the rest of the space, and we just have a lot of power there. And you keep in mind, we could have put a text spline in there, a series right. of offset text splines on top of each other. You could introduce a lot of really cool shapes. You could have, I could have uh, an extruded text that's a something it collides with and these would be trying to outline that text filling in all the gaps yeah move around and fill it in um but along those lines i feel like we've got a decent shape here so do you want to yeah. see if you can make this look like something yeah let's try it out um so that's looking good hit save i'll leave this as the frame you can work from but rendering this out as an animation would obviously be the uh 
the coolest thing. Yeah. Um, and then I, this isn't, I, I'll throw one last detail in here. It's not the way I want to do this because it's going to kind of travel across all of them. Um, I'm trying to think if we could project the spline, but I don't trust that. Um, but uh, anyway, let me show you what I'm talking about. If I was to make a displacer, and actually I will grab both of these hits, Alt-G and put those into a group, which should be at 000, zero, because those are also zero, zero, zero. Uh, if we were to tell this to displace, let's say 50 units uh, and put a shader in here, a color shader, it's gonna explode them all. Ooh. But changing that, I'm going to say that these, I want them to travel on a plane and that's going to just be Y. And now what's going to happen is it's pushing everything up by exactly uh, Y. Uh. But if instead of straight up on Y, we put in, a, instead of a solid color, we put a noise. Mm -hmm. As I start increasing the scale of this noise, we're gonna start getting some nice uniformity between them. And now we can see we get actually do get these different heights. The problem being that it's uniform between every single one of these. Right. So it's cool and we get some height variation, but it's not, it's, not, it's not each spline. Yeah. Now, the one last thing I was kind of thinking is, there would there be any way of... Hmm. Any way of masking it with a spline? Because you can, with fields, you can go to a fall off and feed in the spline. And based on a request, I gave them axon because they hadn't noticed it. I think it was a bug, but they made it so they could do a feedback loop where you could feed a spline in as the reference. Oh, it'll create that field and then keep going back and forth. Yeah, but even if we fed it in, I guess it would be every single spline, so that just wouldn't work. Hmm. So, yeah, I can't think of a good way of making that limited to the splines right now. There might be a way, but once again, if you start making more copies of this sweep, then you could have more layers at more different heights. But yeah, this little bit of height variation is nice. And then at the end, this entire thing could be put into a sweep, and then that should round everything out nicely if we were so inclined. And of course, like, these have that thickness of 10 units, but you know we can make them as thick or thin as we want to. Um, so they're a little bit jagged, but I think I will save this again and let you take over. Nice, um, oh, this is looking cool. Oh, wow. Okay, so yeah, one of the things that I'm thinking is like, just for funsies, like maybe it's like floating in space or something like that. So we won't necessarily render out the floor. Actually, I don't even think it'll show up in Arnold because it doesn't support the, the floor as like an object. But I'm just curious. Let's see if we can do something really cool with this. I'm going to create a new Arnold material. Let's go to standard surface. And let's apply it uh, here to the topmost object in the hierarchy. Um, or maybe it needs to be here because that's disabled. I actually don't know. Um, let's go to C4D2A and pull up our IPR window. My favorite. Um, and then... Oh, I do? Oh, nice. Okay, very cool. Uh, layout. Da -da 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 -da. Arnold Jake Allen. There we go. That's me. Um, yeah, one of the things that I would do if this was like sort of floating in space, and I'm just going to hide these floors in the viewport so we can kind of see what we're looking at. So this is already kind of cool looking. So I don't know like how much like the shader needs to do the work since the form is what uh, uh, creates like sort of the interesting elements. But one of the things that I was curious to see if Arnold could do is maybe if you could use what's called like a color jitter shader, which is like uh, kind of like the... Um, multi-shader in cinema and, yeah. and see if you could maybe like alter the color or adjust it like across the shape of it or something like that. So let's see if that's possible. So I'm going to create another um, under extension C4D2A. I'm going to create another quad light and uh, I'm going to add a target tag to this and it just makes it easier for me to uh, move that stuff around. So uh, since I'm not on R21 is the target tag camera tag, under camera tags no, no, maybe? Sorry. Material modeling. It's under rigging, simulation. I don't use the regular target too often. Um, probably animation tags. Oh, animation. You were totally right. There's our target tag. Third, okay. Third try. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to throw this uh, subdivision surface in there, at least just so at 000, zero, zero, the light is always facing there. So I'm going to pull this open and uh, turn this back on. And we can at least, we'll probably, if I turn off normalize, we'll probably see a little bit of it casting light. Is it showing up at all? Oh, you know what? I have it set to 100% scale. So I'm going to set this to 25% scale so everybody can see it. Ooh, look at that. There we go. And I guess it does render the floor. Uh, maybe that's something that uh, Arnold updated, but in the current version that I'm on, uh, the floors are not uh, rendered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these floors and I'm going to um, turn them off from being rendered just so we have something cool floating in space. And one of the things that you can do and uh, that you can do in the Arnold shader is uh, let's pull this open and see if this works. So we're gonna open our network editor. And Arnold has these uh, this node right here called a 
color jitter. And what it does is it looks at each of the objects either by object, which means like even though all of these are technically under the same like null, uh, it looks at each connected set of polygons as a different object. You can do it on a per face basis. A procedural is if you have like clones that are um, uh, instances in Arnold, but I'm gonna throw this on here and just see if this works. Um, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you really have to play around with the um, the uh, settings to make sure that Arnold behaves uh, properly in doing that. But if I go to gain min and gain max, we should see, okay, I'm trying to see if it will at least do it across all the different objects. It looks like it's doing one sweep and then the other sweep. Yes, that's exactly it. Yeah, so unfortunately, it, it looks like it's kind of like, meh, meh. in this instance, I mean, you could always, if you're doing a still, you could cheat and you could bake it out and use those as your separate objects. Is but, there kind of user data that does it, or is that not? Because uh, in Redshift, I think it'd be. Uh, maybe, maybe it not. is under user data. Let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll set these two back to zero just so I'm not messing myself up. But yeah, that's what I was curious about. I mean, you could do it by face, um, uh, but that would do every little strip of polygons. What, what other modes are there? Uh, there's procedural. Or I mean, face ID. There's face ID and uniform ID. Let's try uniform, uniform ID and see if that actually works. Oh, okay. So it looks like it's doing each of those individual sort of strips of polygons. Mm -hmm. So if I zoom in, we can kind of see that each of those is getting a different, you know, random value. Yeah. And I was like, oh, do it per object. If we do face ID, it's the same thing, but so it does, yeah. yeah. One of them does triangles, I think, and then uniform ID is the non-triangulated face. Oh, okay. I don't know why you'd ever need that, but that option's there. So if I set this back to zero, so there's nothing going on, let's try user data and see if that actually does anything. I'm not sure. Nah. Yeah, huh, bummer. Okay, so in the meantime, let's just try, I'm sure uh, later on, unless everybody has a suggestion in the- um, Somebody says utility. Oh, utility node. Let's see. Uh, did, 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 did. Apply by ID. Let's see. Display. Okay. Let's try. Let's try the utility node because we might actually be able to get the object ID using the utility node. So if I plug this into our beauty pass, the utility node right now is just showing us our color. I'm going to switch it to flat so um, we know exactly what it's doing. But under, um, I believe, uniform ID. Mm, that's our face ID. Line. Primitive ID. Uh, Maybe under, let's see, objects? Could be object ID. Yeah, oh, and it looks like it's doing two. the same sort of thing. That's probably so why then, under the there's hood. Not a, there's not a per segment type of one. I mean, cinema calls them segments. They might not. If there is, I'm not totally sure where it is. Because normally I'll, I'll use the um, object ID, which is this guy. And if you're using it with like a MoGraph cloner, you'll get different colors for each one. But I'm not totally sure uh, where it is. So that's the other unfortunate aspect of it. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Utility node with object ID. That's what we have it set to here. Yeah. And we're getting the just, um, the, two just the two objects. So it's sweep and then sweep. I guess you could technically, maybe you could put the shader on the cloner itself um, and try it. I don't know. Well, if the it's sweep actually... is the geometry. Oh, my bad. Okay, so put it on here. Well, it's still giving us yeah. that thing. And we tried to do the rig where we copied a bunch of uh, the sweeps, but then they would have been separate, but it's just doesn't yes. like it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Like the dynamics didn't like that. Yeah, so, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, I hate when we get into these pits. I mean, it's just like there's some quirks in cinema where it's like, no, like totally. I, I like being in this hierarchy, but I don't like being in this hierarchy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, okay, normally the utility node works with the object ID. This is something that, uh, not to take up too much time, I'd love to investigate later and see if I can get back and maybe we could, you know, post something on Twitter or something if we end up figuring out how to get through uh, giving these the sort of color jitter. But in the meantime, there's somebody saying object and object ID. Object I think versus object D. You can do it from time. Yeah, let's try it one more time and just double check. Because that's where we kind of ran into it. So there's object. Oh, and there's object ID. Let's see if that gives us our. Oh, and apply. Oh, my bad. I did not apply it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's put it on here. Ah, it's still giving us that. And if I put it on the sweep, it's still put it. Uh, put it on the subdivision surface and turn that on as well. Just no, mm, it's still, darn. Uh, it's still yeah, 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 yeah. Object versus object ID, same sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it's weird that we're getting those two. I'm not totally sure uh, what the workaround is. I wonder if there's some sort of other node that would give us like a you know individual ID or something like that. I feel but, like it's more about the hierarchy we build. Like, yeah. I, a sweep is a sweep. It's a single object. And yeah. We're not viewing it per segment. And we tried doing the fracture, which right. could explode with different objects, and instantly the dynamics broke. So right, exactly. All, we're kind of stuck in this catch-22 right now. Yeah. There might be a hierarchy that works, but I, I, there's like you know there's like 10 different ones that we could try. And right, one exactly. Of them might work, but all of them might yeah. not work. Yeah, so. where you're kind of like, okay. So in the meantime, I'm just going to give it a, a really cool sort of base color. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, Crypto Man. Yeah, Connect breaking it. Oh, the Connect is only down on the spline. Yeah, that's what I wondered. So it's yeah, it's treating it like a single spline. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to dive too deep into it. So I'll just at least give it like some sort of interesting lighting. But um, uh, let's change our color at least and see. I know it's kind of a bummer. I kind of want to mm, figure it out. It's yeah. bothering me. Um, we'll throw it in here and uh, at least give it something. Let's see. I think it might be cool if we have some subsurface scattering on this guy. Like, I just feel like it's kind of like sort of fleshy looking. It's really interesting. Uh, let's see. Trying to farm the plane. Okay. I wondered if anybody else had any suggestions of what exactly we could do for that um, thing. Uh, somebody's saying remove the connect. And yeah, I wonder but if the connect is, that's a couple shots in the dark, but that is treating it like a, uh, it's, a it's just merging all the splines into a single spline for a mode. So it's returning a spline, but then. The sweep is still returning one piece of geometry from those. Yeah, and it should be able to give me that object or that individual well, segment ID, I mean, yeah, just, like in Redshift. We could try, I mean, let's just take a second and do it. Like, okay. Let's pull, uh, close the... Uh, let's see, I'm going to put that... The material uh, for a moment. There we go. And uh, just rewind. We have to make changes at zero. Okay. So rewind to zero. Oh, rewind to zero. There we go. Boop. And then um, try pulling, pull the connect out. Or, yeah, put the... Pull the corner out directly and then kill the connect, but I don't think that's going to make a difference. Let's see, and kill the connect. That there probably, we go. Yeah, that gives us something. Same sort and of one that, right here. Yeah, and see, immediately there's only one because it's, it can only view one spine from there. So uh, the connect in the current hierarchy is necessary. So then to make this work, we'd have to start like making that editable. And right. Then each would have to have their own sweep. And yes, you could do it manually, but now we've completely lost all of the sort of comment yeah. yeah the procedural sort of nature of it so yeah. I'm, just, I'm just gonna undo that and leave that right there yeah that's something really interesting i would love to be able to find how to get those individual parts because i've definitely done it before in arnold where you break it apart using that utility node um but this just might be the limit of my knowledge about um there's one other thing i could try and that's shading state which is an, a another node that gives you like basic variables and if i pipe in i think it has to be a integer if I pipe this in and I set it to fi, the, all these variables have random names, but in the help file, there's one of them. Fi, if I remember correctly, is the different um, shading value, but I'm, not, I'm just getting 100% black from these. So, And we couldn't even, yeah, even using, using anything in MoGraph, we couldn't get varied colors on every one of those clones because it's a single sweep. Right, exactly, and we tried exactly. And a series of sweeps, but it wouldn't blend between them. Darn. Yeah, so that's, like, that's kind of a, a little wiggle that we're running into right here. But um, in the meantime, I am going to... Uh, Let's see. I'm going to try to throw at least an interesting color on here and just make it look kind of cool. So we're, we're going to give ourselves kind of like a blue, I would say, just because it's really interesting. And then the base color can be something that causes it to sort of mix with the subsurface scattering in a funky way. So I'm going to give it like this and just gonna raise that up. There we go. And raise, lower the subsurface scanner. So we have this kind of blue-purple mixture that looks kind of interesting. And uh, I believe if we lower the scale, we'll get more or less of that together. Um, Depending on the brightness of these lights, too, if you really crank it up and you put it underneath the object, you, we should get something interesting through it. I mean, there might be like a, a ray depth, you know, sort of value that you have to do, but you can at least see that we're getting something kind of cool looking under here. Yeah. So we have this sort of, you know, vapor wavy looking looking shape right here. So I'm going to leave this under here as kind of like a, a rim around the bottom. And then I'm just going to create two more of these guys and put them on the sides and give them just a much bigger size so we get this kind of kind of shape and lower their exposure a lot. There we go. So I know my window is super duper tiny, so excuse the the tiny, tiny window. Normally I would have this open up, but um, let's just give it like just a little bit of lighting here. And I'm just kind of slapping this together and seeing what works. So we can pull something up and give this like a little bit of that kind of thing. And I think what I'm going to do is just color it um, right here. I mean, it's kind of funky looking. Um, so maybe I'll just set it to white. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, undock this now, and we can see it at a much larger scale. Um, here we go. So let's set this to 50%, and I'm going to go from there. I'm going to move the camera in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an Arnold camera right here. And because I don't want to mess with the position of this shape, I'm just going to tilt the camera for the moment and give it just a little bit of a sort of a Dutch angle. And we can have something cool, so it looks like it's kind of floating in space. So whoa, look at that. It's our spaceship. Yeah. So if we go to C4D2A, IPR window, we can see again where it is. And this might be something fun where you could like, you know, uh, clone it or duplicate it or just have this animation floating around a bunch of other shapes. But this is like the basic setup of, of where I would go with it. Um, 
one of the other things you can do, and it might it might bog it down a little bit, but you can throw like an environment volume in there, sort of octane style, uh, and get yourself like some nice um, you know rays coming out of it, basically. So if I go into the Arnold render and go into the main tab, there's an area called atmosphere. Uh, and I can click that guy and go to atmosphere volume and it adds it in and it might be totally blown out. But one of the cool things is we can go to all of our quad lights and we can set their volume contribution to zero. So they're not actually contributing to the volume at all. And I believe this one at the very bottom is the one underneath the object. And if I raise its volume contribution up, we might be able to get some interesting glow or some interesting effects. And if I lower the spread so that it's kind of um, angling down, it's pumping more light basically uh, uh, through the center of the light and not spreading it across like kind of like a barn door on either side. And if I lower its contributions to subsurface scattering and diffuse, I think I might be able to make it not so blown out. And this is where I would like sit and just check it out and then maybe turn on and off the uh, the volume. Uh, your sample settings is, is where it comes into to play really heavily uh, with these volumes. The the atmosphere volume material right here has um, sample settings right here. So I'm just going to crank this up for the moment, and we'll just see. And then uh, after that, I think, um, well, we're probably at a, a good stopping point for this guy. But this is where I would maybe take it into comp and um, you know color correct it and duplicate it a bunch of times or something like that, yeah. make an interesting pattern. Or just for fun, pause it and hit play, and let's let the splines explode out. Oh, OK, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's probably going to disappear on us, but. We can just assume, right around frame thirty, hit pause, and it'll yeah. probably refresh. And we'll ch we'll check it out. Oh, scale the light. Okay, cool. That's another thing I can do is I can expand the scale of that light, and it should at least give us more more rays. All right, you can probably. There we go. There we are. Okay, okay, okay. All right. A world space gradient, so you could fake the um, okay, yeah. the gradient too. It looks really cool. So let's. Oh yeah, let's pull this over. Okay, cool. <laughs> so there we go. So now we have our like our trippy sort of spaceship that we see right now. And if I move this guy over, and uh, thank you, Tobias, for the suggestion. I'm just going to scale this light up. And we can see that it gives more contribution to the volume. But of course, it, it blows it out. So it's kind of like a little bit of a dance between um, uh, getting this light to show up, but also not blowing it out. So uh, I am going to lower my exposure just a little bit and lower my spread even more so that we get this kind of I don't know, this beam of light coming out of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Interesting. And it's floating in space. So there we go. We have our, uh, we have our uh, you know, it kind of looks like reaction yeah. diffusion or something like that. You know, you have yeah. your trippy sort of space triangle, basically. Deadly space flower. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like, whoa, you know, like, what is that? Yeah. Um, neat. Well, I'm going to give this a save. Uh, I definitely would like a little bit, maybe tomorrow during the bonus stream, if somebody can ask me... Um, this question again, maybe we can try some of those other hierarchies, but it's not worth like trying all 10 options during this stream. But I will save this uh, incrementally. File, save incremental. Um, okay, uh, we don't have time for another question. Um, uh, sorry that we didn't get to the Zachary Corzine one. I did mm -hmm. like that one. It's super cool. There's yeah. a lot of fun stuff you can do, but it's a very elegant kind of design. But we can't answer questions about him every week. He's yeah. just so popular. Um, so no time to do a cinema one, but if there's any other questions here for Jake or for me, then yeah. feel free to throw it in. We can just wrap that up in the last couple minutes here. Um, uh, thanks, Pro Tools, a bunch oh, yeah, for putting you. the links in there. Awesome. Everybody, make sure you go check out Jake's work. Make sure you follow him on Instagram and on Twitter. Yep. Also, you can follow Sorosky and see all the amazing work that they're putting out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you visit Chicago at some point, like you said, there's classes, some courses yes. that are being run over there, which are really fun as well. Um, yeah, thanks everybody. And yeah, I saw I saw so a bunch of other people jumping in, in the chat. Always sad that we can't get to every single question. I know, but I know. Uh, thanks for everybody hanging out. All the great uh, info and all the chatting back and forth. Once again, feel free to head over to rocketlassoslack.com to sign up and continue the conversation. Uh, I'm sure that there's going to be people who are trying to figure out the limitations we ran into here and try and figure it out. And I can see it. And then maybe I'll know how to do it next time this question comes up again, probably yeah. two weeks from now. I know. Yeah, I'm super <laughs> curious. If, yeah, if anybody has any ways to figure that out, especially the object ID stuff, like that would be awesome. So awesome. Uh, um, Tobias is asking when you'll be back. Ooh, uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, whenever you yeah, want me to be it was, back. It was uh, fun. So yeah, this depends how last. Yeah, depends how often Sarovsky lets you yeah, out the door. Exactly. You're, I know, you know, totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, uh, I was going to say, feel free to uh, yeah hit me up on uh, Instagram or Twitter or anything like that if anybody has any 
uh, suggestions or, or different questions uh, about me um, and the work uh, or, or the things that we're doing today. Um, oh, and I also, I, I, w I do have to plug uh, Swarovski Labs, uh, the classes that we're doing this year. So uh, if anybody's in Chicago, uh, we're going to have uh, classes on uh, freelancing promotion and motion design in 3D and all these different cool stuff. So um, feel free to visit, uh, uh, it's swarovskilabs.com or you can go to our website and click on labs as well. So some cool stuff, yeah. Uh, excellent. Well, uh, unfortunately, I, there's a couple new people who were supporting on Patreon. I wasn't able to update the credits because I was too I was up until three in the morning working on tutorials. But this should wrap this up. Thank you so much, everybody, for the amazing questions and all the support and just coming and hanging out. So I'll see you in the Slack channel and I'll see you on the bonus stream tomorrow. And otherwise, I will see you next week. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.